watch any of your stuff? I used to have a real aversion to it. Now I do. I try to watch it once and be done. Yeah. One and done. Yeah. How many times do you watch it, Paige? Never. Um, <laughs> no, that's not true. I watch some stuff. Okay. Sometimes. Some stuff. Stuff. If it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Oppenheimer all oh, well, three hours. Really? Thank you. You're Did like, you... I skipped over a couple of bars. Did you see Barbie first? No, but I do feel bad because I we were in Oppenheimer and my phone rang and we have like a one year old at home. And so I kind of like looked down at my phone for a second and looked back up like it was very, Stop. very quick. And that was the scene <laughs> where he, Josh goes, the bomb. you just missed but. like half of my life. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like halfway through the movie. I've already sat through however many hours. So we have to rewatch. I feel bad. Oh, that's awesome. I saw the important oh, no. part. The, oh, the main I'm part. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm past it. Yeah. But he just literally was like, "We've moved on. You missed all my lines." <laughs> Best four lines in cinematic history, some say. Uh, well, I think we're ready. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vow Files Reality Recap Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Justin. Woo! And my fiance and pop culture correspondent, she's sitting at the desk today. I'm a li- I'm having a, it's like a weird moment for me. She, you look so proper. I don't even know if you're wearing pants. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <She's fine. laughs> uh, the lovely Natalie Joy is with us and she's sitting at the desk because we have our first double date experience in, in reality recap history. The dynamic duo, the dynamic. charming couple. Yes. The one, the wow. only. Oh my God. Paige and Josh Pell. <laughs> this is so Yay. exciting. How are you doing? We're great. How we're, are you doing? I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Vegas for my bachelor party. Wow. Tell us everything. It was your own bachelor party. It was. Okay, fine. That changes things. Yes. Well, I, thank you to Natalie. It it wouldn't it truly wouldn't have been possible without He likes to do this Natalie so that Joy. people aren't like, Nick, how could you leave your what pregnant wife at all. <laughs> I saw the flowers. I yeah. saw the flowers on Instagram. Yeah. He did. He's very flowers. sweet. No, but like I, I'm not a planner. I'm not in my party era. You know, so the idea of a bachelor party didn't like it wasn't like things I need to get done <laughs> yeah. before I have a kid and a baby. Like a bachelor party wasn't like on the list. But we went home in October for a baby shower with my family friends. Got to see some Yo, of the guys. The guys we're like, hey, Nick, you're going to have a bachelor party. We are married with kids. We need an excuse to get the fuck out. <laughs> That's yeah. always the best. And I was, yeah, I wanted to see the guys, you know. And so we decided on Vegas, it being kind of centrally located. It's a puddle jump from L.A., you know. Yeah, I wasn't trying to try to do anything. I was thinking like St. Augustine, Florida, you know, just like a small, quiet little town nope. for his bachelor party. <laughs> I went, we're like, Vegas! <laughs> I would have appreciated that. It was truly based off of convenience. I'm not like a... I'm not a Vegas guy. Like, I'll go, but... Did the dads really get after it? I feel like at every bachelorette party, bachelor party, it's always the parents who are like, we need yeah, this. The dads are need... like... The yeah, ones. They're... they're, they're yeah, full force. I went to bed uh, at 3 a.m., which... That's like... <laughs> oh, my God. I go to bed at 9. That's the morning. <laughs> so, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes I'm up at like 4. And then uh, some of the dads did proceed to... I found out later... Head to the strip club. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. They rolled in about mm-hmm. six a.m. Are, are we talking sapphire? I mean, not that I know. Probably a little I, spearmint. I would imagine. I don't know. They don't, know. Rem- <laughs> they don't remember. They don't remember. Solid. They don't remember. I was at that point of the night, cozied up in my bed in my very comfortable bed at Resort World. Have you been to Resort World? I I have been there. I've been to their cigar lounge. It's Ooh. lovely. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. We also we saw. Well, I did it. My my friend Dave went to the cigar lounge. Eight cigar lounge. Shout he, out. Yeah. Eight. And he saw um, the owner of the Raiders was there having a cigar. Mm, yeah, wow. we saw we saw a couple of Raiders players. I think they they might be in affiliation with the Raiders over at Resort World, but it's a lot of fun there at Resort World. You should guys, it's like a little city. I really enjoyed it. You didn't really leave, did you? Didn't really leave Resort <laughs> World. Yeah, I had a bachelor party under duress because I planned not to, and then that's how mine felt. Yeah, yeah, because we're <laughs> you do it for bags. other you do it for yeah. other people you do it for everyone. Yeah. Else. Well, your brother one of, one of my groomsmen was like, "We got to do it." What, what are we talking about? So, 
we decided the night before the wedding to go to a really high end strip club on the side of the 405 <laughs> freeway. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, so in we, LA. Sta- wow. we stayed in town. In LA. Okay. Wow. And uh, and I figured I'm with my brother in law and my groomsmen. Like, this is as kosher as kosher is going to get. And randomly, John Stamos came. And so it's all of us there at this place. And then. <laughs> I, all I remember is Stamos walks in and he's like, God, like, cause we're doing the move at the strip club, which is just like, thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Like, I think I'm going <laughs> to, <Text. laughs> I'll like, just have another orangina. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Stamos was like, come on, come on. We got to get dances. Like we got to do the whole thing. You know, we got to have fun. And so I just remember being in a room and Stamos is in the room next to me and we're there like just with these wonderful people who are getting their their masters yeah. obviously yeah. And, um, and i just hear from the other room stan must go no no, no i'm shy oh. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like that's so funny cute. no 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 that's i'm cute. shy what a polite way to reject yes yeah. <laughs> no no i'm shy <laughs> no, i'm shy uh, there was a moment we went to on friday like everyone kind of wore themselves out the first night we were there for two nights by the second night we were in bed by 11 mm. perfect yeah and as we were walking to the nightclub, I looked back and I had this like, like what a really pathetic group of clubbers. Cause like we were just dragging ass. Cause at this point it was like 1230 by the time we went to the club, which is past all of our bedtimes. Yeah. And it was just a bunch of like dads roaming into the club, kind of dragging ass. And then we walked through the club and I'm thinking we just do not belong here. It's not for us <laughs> no, anymore. No, it's not for us. And then we stayed there for like 45 minutes and then went back and gambled. So, Fun. I, don't know, I, did, I uh, won a little money. Nice. I'm not much of a gambler, but I really enjoyed it. What I, 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 so this is how I met. I met Natalie through massaging hmm. indirectly. <laughs> Sounds like weird. That's, ah. <laughs> well, Natalie DM'd me. I've told this story a few times, okay. but I, I like a good chair massage. Like, okay. I don't care if you're in the airport mall, you know, those chair massages. Yeah. Like, Great. If you're available and I have time, I'm sitting down. <laughs> okay. I love you're it. You're getting my money. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. getting my money. Yeah. And, Express spa. <laughs> yeah. And when I lived in Venice, uh, a, a wonderful lady named Diane was there every day at Whole Foods. At Whole Foods. Uh, and as a single serving single guy, you know, I'd go to the grocery store multiple times a week because, you know, I don't know if I'm going out for dinner. I don't know if I'm just going to like, I need a burger. I'm not like grocery shopping for the week. Sure. Right. Very Parisian of you. Yeah. Let's get the essentials. Yeah. Just the basics, <laughs> yeah. you know, just a single hamburger patty, maybe a chicken wing, sure. you know? And so I would always go and like get a 30 minute massage. Nick's I, just shirtless yeah. in, the whole in the middle of the whole food. <laughs> so I'd, I'd go four or five times a week. It just became a routine. I went, so we built a relationship. And as a young single influencer, not so young, I suppose, but like you, you need to take fucking pictures. Yeah. And like put it on the gram because they just keep telling you to post more. And I was like, fuck, I just haven't posted in a while. And I built a rapport with Diane, the masseuse. And one day I was like, hey, this is really weird can you just take a picture of me? <laughs> and so we went out to the parking lot, took a, she took a picture of me. That was the picture that showed up on Nally's Explorer page that caused her to DM me. Sweet. Wow. Right. Thanks, Diane. I only Diane. bring this up because as <laughs> I was playing backjack, they have these wonderful masseuse ladies roaming the, the casino floor. And yes. I just... All week at long, I was playing Blashack and was getting shoulder rubs. It was the, the absolute dream. best. Nick just kept saying, I'm having the best time just sitting here getting massages at the table. Like, and he kept bringing it up. So I was like, what is, what do these women look like? Yeah, what's going you? on? Like, what's going on here? I don't know. I didn't even see their face. I was looking at the Blashack <laughs> table. They were I've right never heard you. of that. Yeah. I haven't it's, either. It's I, amazing what they'll do to keep you spending money. Spending money. It yeah. was great. And I thought to myself, like, what? Because, like, the, the massages aren't that expensive, except that when you add, the fact that you're gambling, yeah, yeah, it can get really expensive. But I was up. You over, didn't over feel the like it distracted you at all. You're like, oh, that feels so good. Oh shit, you know, <laughs> like you weren't like <laughs> he's hitting on twenty. <laughs> yeah, I, it's what. Listen, I I don't gamble much. So for this particular trip, I brought an amount of money that I decided was more than I had ever been willing to gamble before. It's, you know, it's my bachelor party. And it yeah, was a, and you have a baby on the way. There's yeah. no better time to gamble. To lose money. money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I selected an amount of money that I was just like. Comfortable with. I, if I lose this, it's not going to affect my life, but it will piss me off. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I wanted the juice. You know, you got to, that's the whole point of gambling is to feel the, like, if you lose this, to be annoyed. 
Like, what I don't else think is I've ever gambled, but like I would imagine you hate gambling. Yeah, because I grew up broke and so I have trauma. <laughs> and yeah. as soon as I lose more than two hundred dollars, I start questioning like I'm like, would my ancestors be proud of me? <laughs> There's a little bit of that, but I decided I could lose X number. And uh I started up, then it went way down, and then went it all back plus a little bit That's great. more. So the ride. Yeah. Bachelorette? No, no, unfortunately not. Um, you know, just like being pregnant, it didn't feel really in my cards. I wanted to be on like a yacht in Cabo, like shaking my ass drunk. And that yeah. just wasn't a possibility while pregnant. And then I really can't imagine leaving a like month old to do it before yeah. the wedding. So what would like, be a like, what could we do? And by we, I mean you perfect. for you <laughs> like post she comes out. Like at what point do we throw a a party for you? You I don't out, know. you out with the girls. Paige is the one who's had shaking that two ass. children before. So I you have. tell me. And a Vegas bachelorette. I and did a have Vegas. A, I did okay. have a Vegas bachelorette. But I I feel like you you should like. Do you want to get away right now? Go do like I would say like prenatal massage stuff like that. But that's kind of it's kind of boring. They're like scared to touch you. Yeah. It's I, just prenatal very like massages honestly are terrible. It's so bad. It's not even worth it. It's not. You're like laying sideways and they're like, I, I, it's too much pressure. I know. I'm like, no, you haven't even touched like, get me. in there. <laughs> yeah. I need you in there. This is what I need. Like some back rubs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not. Yeah, I guess you just got to wait. Get Give yourself a couple months. Get back out there. But then it's I feel like. You After have the, the wedding, wedding, I won't want to like plan anything. I'll be like, you know what? I'm so over trips and planning and doing shit. Like, I just want to be home with my kid. True. Was there a point after early motherhood where you're like, I just want to get the fuck out, shake my ass and get hammered? Was there a moment like of like, fuck um, these kids? <laughs> there, there Every are some day. moments. Yeah. <laughs> no, Earmuffs, I, Josh. Don't like <laughs> not really. I don't. Not really. I, Josh and I actually are really bad about getting out and like going to do stuff without the kids. Like it's just hard. It's yeah. just I imagine it's you're tired. Bit. Yeah, it's it's just like a lot of moving parts to get everyone situated to where you can go enjoy and not have to think about anything. And although we did we did go out to Kathy Hilton's Christmas party and that's where we met that's you guys. How we, so yeah. yeah, that was a fun night. And actually. People were jumping like, let us watch the kids. You need to go. And How did like, you end up fun. guys going to? Because I was a bit caught off guard seeing you there, Josh. Really? But then, it was random. It yeah, was really I random. mean, I'm happy to see you. Yeah, I just no. was, when I was going to Kathy Hill on the Christmas party, I wasn't like, I'm going to run into Josh, <laughs> Josh. Beck tonight. Yeah, like, but you're the Bravo fan. Or are, are, are you also, Josh? Do you? I do. And I've been turned on by Paige into the Bravo verse, <sighs> through, first through Vanderpump Rules, because I... I have a little skin in the game with yeah. Vanderpump. How and so? Then, well, I've known Kristen Doty since oh. I was 20. Oh. I knew her when she first moved out oh. to California. That was my reaction, too, because I started watching <laughs> Vanderpump Rules like <laughs> day one. And I just was so miserable at my job. And I just would come home and I'd be like, just give me this hour to myself. <laughs> I'm going to shut the door, watch a show, decompress, and like I'll talk to you later. And I remember one day he w he came in and he was like, oh, my God, Kristen. And this is like season one. Kristen was like so unhinged. Yeah. And he walked in and was like, Kristen. And I'm like, you can't just, oh, my God, Kristen. Like, tell me the everything fuck? you yeah. know yeah. about Kristen. <laughs> and then by the end of the night, I had a follow requests from her on Instagram. She had my number. She's texting me. She's like, when can we go get drinks? Let's hang out. Let's be Stop. Like, Oh, my God. Getting invited to all the, the Vanderpump parties, doing all the things. How long ago was this? It was a long time ago. I mean, season uh, one. Right? Well, how long do you guys know each other? 12 years? 12, going on 13 years. Yeah. Wow. But I, I was 20 and my best friend's older brother was like, I met this girl on MySpace. MySpace. And she's mm. coming over tonight. We're at his bombed out shit apartment in North Hollywood. Sorry, Lynn and Gary. It was lovely. <laughs> and this girl comes in and like, Kristen, I mean, still, but then like smoke show comes yeah. in and we're like gary who is this girl you met on the internet <laughs> yeah. like, this is not normal it's 2007 <laughs> and he's like she's cool she's from michigan and like she's on a tv show <laughs> and but we didn't she even wasn't know at the she time. wasn't at the time mm -mm. no this she is don't pre this is pre oh my God. she's That's just working at sir as a civilian 
Oh. And he's like, bro, like I go to this restaurant she works at, like they got good Pomodoro, bro. <laughs> like this is great. And then we're following it and we become like, she really becomes embedded with us. And like, she just hung out, like didn't have any airs about her. And then she's dating Gary and then they break up because she cheats on Gary with Sandoval. Stop. No. And yeah. then she cheats on Sandoval with Gary. Stop. <laughs> no. and, then, yeah. and didn't like Gary and Sandoval figure it out and they became in contact and they were like, are you, are we dating the same girl? They no. kept going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. No. I love you, Kristen. <laughs> Sorry. She's the I think she's talked about that. Right? Yeah, she has. Well, the well, first time I met Kristen when she came on the show and I was just getting into Vanderpump. So like, I'm also like thankful and glad because I felt like I might have been a little hard on her had I known her entire history. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she was such a generous and, and lovely guest. that She, I, is. she know, really I, is. I, I really I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. But yeah, yeah it was uh, she's she has immersed herself in a scandal or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's reality TV gold. She is. And she is who she is. Like, that's her. Yeah. She is who she is. But she's also just the best person. She really is such a good friend. Do you guys still talk her. with Kristen? Yeah, all, all the, the time. time. She calls <gasps> She's me a like, gem. We, we talk all the time. I love her. She's such a nice person. She really is. I and think you told me at Kathy Hilton's party, you were like, Kristen is the type that like, you'll meet her for the first time. And then she'll be like, oh my, do we need to like bury a body? Oh my I'll God. I'll do it with you. She will. <laughs> she, my sister's also big Bravo fans. And they were like, I can't believe you're friends with Kristen. She came, they were like, they keep asking me, could she come to dinner? Could she done? all of a sudden, like they have their own group text going. I'm not even involved. They're going out together. Stop. Her boyfriend's friends with my brother. Yeah, they're they're all best friends now oh with, with Kristen. And- we're currently in the midst of watching Vanderpump from, from the beginning. season one. So wow. now we're on season three. So, so it's lucky. been Yeah, no, it's been <sighs> really a blessing all available now on Bi Fi Plus if you guys want to recap with us. It's a, it is available. Yeah, and no, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Do you but like and so did you watch from season one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Big fan. Actually, I kind of fell off a little bit once everyone got canceled and got kicked off the show. I was like, I don't think this is gonna be the same. And so I kind of fell off and then, you know, Scandival happens and you have to you when have you, to you have to go back, back in. when you Scandival go back. was going on. And again, I was new to it, but you yeah. you knew the history. Oh, yeah. Now that I am going back and watching it, I am a bit taken back by the Ooh. cast's hypocrisy. It's, it's, so, it's all, so true. It's so true. Because it's like, I, I have very strong feelings about it. There's a lot of people who've been affected by infidelity. It was a very triggering scandal. Mm-hmm. But for the Lala's and the Sheena's and the James of the world, like I knew they all had Jax. Yeah, yeah, Jax is like, I knew they had done some shit, you know, (laughs) but like it was I was always under the impression that like this, you know, scandal was so much worse than anything anyone else has ever done in that group. But it isn't. Yeah. What's what's the the reasoning behind? Is it? I think they were saying opportunity. I think they were saying because <laughs> cash, yeah, because Rachel and and uh, Ariana, Formerly known as Raquel, yeah, yeah, are are like best friends, and they and she it was just well, like was happening layer, this whole sure. time, and but, maybe because it was like an actual relationship that they had, and they were sneaking around, and it wasn't just like a one time cheated or something. With, yeah, it was I egregious. It was as bad as it could be without totally. kids involved. And yeah. I think well, also with Ariana, like freezing her eggs and like they were planning her and tom like yeah yeah there was a lot to be upset about for sure i just from the rest of the cast it was having gone back and watching it yeah it's like this whole like well that was you know james kennedy he was always like that was two years ago that was three years ago that was it was always like it didn't matter as long as it was in the past true but they had all done their version of scandal do we think it's because Mm. Sandoval has always been like the person to be like, I can't believe you would do that. You're a bad guy. Jax, you're a bad person. And then Maybe. he's doing it too. And everyone's like, you've always kind of been, you know, like you're not as, you're not better than the rest of us. But, yeah. but Tom also had cheated, you know, like, no, I don't know. Oh, was yeah. anyone under With the Kristen impression that like, Tom yeah. Sandoval was this beacon of righteousness who like, <laughs> no. you know, 
That's what I was thinking. What would Tom Sandoval do if you're looking for a moral compass? I don't know if anyone was like that. I don't know. (laughs) WWTT. Yeah. TST. Like he let us down, you know. No. And so I'm just, even Ariana, I mean, she, from from what I can remember, Katie is the only one who really has never really done some shit where it was like, how could you? From what I, so far. And I'm only on season three. I'm trying to think. Ariana hasn't, hasn't done that either, except that she also, was rather indifferent and cavalier about infidelity around the group, especially if it didn't affect her, even, mm-hmm. you know, like Tom, how Tom and her started. It was like, yeah, you know, whatever. You know, he did that to her, not me. So even that, it's kind of hard to like, now that Ariana's all like... But Ariana and Tom got together when Ar- when Tom and Kristen were still together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the whole... But Kristen, I think, has said before, like, that's a completely different situation. Like, this is way worse than what he did to me. She definitely said that. And she said that on that couch. But oh. the more I've watched back, I'm curious as to thing. why it is different. <laughs> I don't know. Because when Kristen was dating Tom, she was in her early 30s. They had been dating for four or five years. They lived together. They lived together. Yeah. Uh, again, she has the, had the time of like getting over Tom and not caring and looking back and being like, ew, how could I date him? I'm sure she thinks right. all these things right. Right. with the benefit of hindsight. But I'm t- watching it back. She was very upset. She seemed yes. to be not in her in her best self. Right. And I'm just wondering how it was different. It's. I guess it's not. Will, I guess it's not. Will you guys clue us into, I remember I'm. Um, on my podcast on Good Guys, we do these things called speak pipes, right? Where people can kind of leave you a, a voice message. Ooh. So the saga starts two months ago. Girl calls in, says my, I think it was her sister or or maybe it was just a good yeah. friend. A good friend's husband won't share his location with her. Okay. What do you think? What do you think, boys? And we said he's cheating for sure. Like, <laughs> for sure. I mean, if he, I mean, if he's not, yeah. Percent. Say, if well, he's refusing well, to share a location, Josh like, was really silent on the call. I listened to that and I was like, you don't share, your, we don't share <laughs> locations. And I'm like, Josh hasn't said anything because he's like, yeah, you guys are right. And he's like, shoot, we don't share a location with each other. But, but it's, but if you asked, I would. Right. If I, we just don't. You but have the test. If I asked, app, she can see where my car is. She'll be like, oh, having fun at yoga. Like, I thought you were getting groceries. I'm like, I need this for me. That's I need true. it a minute. <laughs> Please. I, core power yoga, shut up. But she, she, yeah, she was, and then she called back a week later and was like, I just want to let you guys know. He was. He had a fiance or a, there was like a whole thing that unfolded. She was like, you oh, guys were spot on. She was the other woman. No, it was it. it there was some other. I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not they were quite both sure. The other woman. They were. Yeah. Like literally about to marry the other woman. I think there was a kid, perhaps something. And so my question is like, I, I don't want to gender it, but I just feel like a woman's instinct is so sharp. Truly. But uh, just a partner's instinct. Right. To it. To an extent, like obviously you can certainly be cheated on like. But when it's so egregious or what we saw on with Scandaval, right, it was happening for a year and people sleeping in the house and like it just felt so forward. Yeah. Like what what do you, what went through your guys' head seeing that? Like, is there a version of like where you just tell yourself it can never happen? Like, how does Scandival? someone not see it? Yeah, Scandaval. Yeah. Like, how does Ariana or like just in general, like how does someone. Somebody well, was calling it out. Who who was it? Somebody was like, they were why all are saying they, like, this is kind of weird. Why are they always well, together? Yeah. Tell you. I mean, it's just like when you're in a relationship, right? Like you, your job is to believe in your partner, to trust your mm. partner, you know, to like always have your partner's back. So like that's your default. So and and then you have ego involved, right? The idea that like no one would cheat on me, you know, like how could everyone, anyone do that? And then you combine the fact that A, your default is to trust your partner. Like that's, you know, how I am. I'm just going to choose. To, if I'm going to be in a relationship, I must trust you. And if I don't, I'm going to reevaluate my relationship with right. you, but that's mm-hmm. my default. And then your ego being like, this couldn't happen to me. You combine that. And so it's just in your nature to like, just assume like any other option other than they're cheating on you is the first thing you consider, you know? And but so there's, there are eventually yes. the signs leading like at, at, each point you kind of have to turn your back on what becomes more and more a glaring kind of stay out. Don't go in danger ahead. Like at what point do you go like, I've been seeing a couple of these signs. Maybe yeah, but the first, like, trend. the first the uh, first two or three times your partner like is out a little later than you expected. You're not you're not sure. thinking, oh, they must be cheating on me. It's like, oh, they 
They had a good time with their friends. Right. You know, like. Right, 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 right. You know, and so. And then I feel like also it was like the people who were telling her like Lala. Like, I feel like she's not really that close with Lala. So I feel like she was probably like, you just don't know. Oh, that's another thing. In that that world, right? They, you know, we're watching Housewives and like whether it's Vanderpump or Housewives in Bravo world, half the drama comes from false accusations of people being like right this or that so like you don't how do you know what to believe believe. because like half the time people are trying to stir up drama for the sake of drama right but also lala like is always calling everyone out and i'm like was it your like you you know what i mean i'm like there was some like did you see all the signs before because then as soon as you did you just kicked him right to the curb but i just feel like with the the cheating like our good friends are going through something similar right now. And she, I've talked to her. I'm like, did you not know? She was like, no, we've been married for so long and we've just have a good relationship. And when he would say, I need, I need a weekend to like go see my family. She's like, I didn't question him and being like, yeah, you don't, yeah. you want to go see your family. Yeah. Your, she was like, I thought everything was good to be like, right. you must be fucking someone else. Right. Like it's just, and there is, you're right. Like I had a, a buddy growing up and we were young, like super, like, I mean, 1920. And he was just head over heels for this girl. Like she was so, like he had made her his God. And we were like, this girl sucks. And uh, <laughs> she just wasn't the best. And then a friend of ours was like, yo, she, she worked at this hotel. Like she's making out with the Bellman son. <laughs> like, and I'm like, first of Who's all, you. <laughs> I was like, sounds like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah. but, um, and he's like, yo, like, I'm telling you, like, this is what he told me. And I made the decision. I'm like, we can't tell him. And he was why? like, why? Because I said, we don't have hard proof because mm. the guy's not going to say it. I said, and he's so head over heels that he'll make some excuse. Yeah, he won't believe us. He'll turn on right. you. Yeah, you need the evidence. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Yeah, it's tough. And six months later, as soon as he like gave me a glimmer of like, uh, I don't know something. if like something's up. I was like, well, <laughs> let me tell you something, buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is tough. Uh, have you seen the new trailer for Vanderpump? I have. I was telling Josh about it on our way here. We had quite the drive. I was trying to like be like, yeah, I have to catch you up on some stuff. Um, I have. I mean, the short. Do you want to watch? Do we? Should we just play it? Do you want to watch it? Yeah, yeah. Thank we, you. Yeah. It was one case. I miss who he used it's to always be. Always one to me. thing with Tom Schwartz. He's like, it's just well, no big deal. Yeah. Wow. You've got so much going up to do still, Tom. It's sad to me. Oh, no, no. Whoa, stop, stop. Where are we going? Another drink being thrown. You are terrifying. And suddenly she becomes God. The new season Ooh. of Vanderpump Rules premieres January 30th on Bravo and streaming on Peacock. <laughs> wow. Right? I wow. Chills. Lala wow. saying that is intense. Yes. Did you also last week see the clip of Sheena crying? She did yes. some interview crying. I was just telling Josh about that. About how... Apparently, she is now the victim of Scandal. She said, next to Ariana, this affects her the most out of anyone in the cast. And she, from the hills of Azusa. From the hills of Azusa. <laughs> the best line listen. ever delivered on that show. I, which, the more I thought about it, really pissed me off, that comment from Sheena. I've experienced it. I've seen it. But, like, when people deal with, well, infidelity or some personal trauma or, like, a real hard moment, a breakup even, whatever it is. It's amazing. You really can tell who your friend, real friends are. Mm. Like the whole point of being a friend often, especially in adulthood, is to like step up in the difficult times, not like, right. yeah, let's go boating. And I always find it amazing people's ability to make someone else's painful experiences They're their right. own tragedy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was hard on you. I'm sure you had to step up in this moment yeah. to be a friend. Yeah. I'm sure it was inconvenient at some point, but this isn't your pain. Your fight. This didn't happen to you. It yeah. happened to Ariana. And like, sure. And also Ariana is like her, isn't she like her best friend from before the show? Like she brought her on. How she, yeah. I think. I think oh, yeah. yeah, right? yeah. On so like, this Sheena. is like one of her pre, pre-show friends that she's known for but a long time always like, amazing the people who try to make someone else's like painful experience about them and it yeah. happens all the time especially in la but the tears and also you see in the trailer that schwartz and sheena made out at some point i'm not sure about the timeline there if that was when they were 
when he was still with Katie. God, I hope not. That would be. That would be. I, I mean, I mean, either way, it's weird. It's weird. But, but I, hasn't she been with Brock since yeah. Katie and Schwartz have been divorced? I think. Oh, you're right. Right. So like what? that would be. There's a lot happening. And I think isn't Brock really good friends with Schwartz now? Aren't they good friends? And mm. isn't well, Brock really handsome in person? Yes. yes. That <laughs> party, the Kathy Ellen part, I was like, good for you, Brock. Yeah. No, he's a nice looking dude. He's, a, <laughs> he's, he's got like, just yeah. the lights and camera. Yeah. He's, he's a, a good looking meatball. <laughs> he's a yeah. meatball for sure. He's that's, a meatball That's for my sure. goal. That's yeah. what I'm going that's for. That's Josh. Uh, yeah. And then Charlie, Charlie referred to him as a payroll husband last week on this, on this Ooh, show. Yeah. Wow. yeah. We made some Yikes. merch. Available now at Valfiles.com. It says payroll husband. What's What happened to her ex, Shay? That's a great question. because like. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, no idea. Music. Yeah, I haven't thought about him for a minute. Wasn't he? Yeah, doing he was music? Music. Yeah. music. Yeah. <laughs> he was like he was like one of those classic what he appeared to be one of those like kind of grimy music producers. Yeah. In the early two thousands that like, you know, some guys were DJs, some guys played the guitars, other guys were quote unquote music producers. It was right. all it was just all about getting laid. Right. Yes. And he came across as one of those guys. I also do want to address that they're still living together in their house yeah. after this whole scandal, everything. They say that they have no contact and that they're just living in the house together, but separate. Would you ever be able to do that? Or like, is the point just because you're like, I deserve the house. I deserve the house. Like, are you just, is that just like fighting over property at that point? Or why, are, why would you stay? I think they probably, it's just financially more feasible to stay. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to move. But yeah, I don't want to have to like, move my stuff. For, for, yeah. pra for practical standpoints, like, I think that is part of the consideration. But as someone who, when I've gotten out of relationships, I, I once had to move out, like, got engaged, got cheated on, was living with <laughs> her, and was like, I can't be here. So I moved with my grandma, which sucked. I mean, Great memory now. Yeah. yeah. I cherish it now. At the time. Wisconsin? Yeah. I was like, Cute. she was living downtown Milwaukee and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And like, she's my, my cool grandma Phyllis. Cute. But that was a, you know, at the time, a humiliating experience. Right. But mm. it was still better than being in the same room. It wasn't financially feasible. Like, I, you know, I was, I was doing fine. I had a job. But I guess this is all to say, like, I understand this is a, like nothing about this experience for right. Ariana, I'm sure, was convenient. But like, as we've mentioned earlier, just her ability to be in the same room still kind of takes away from her argument. What she's saying of versus what she's doing. Yeah, it's just yeah. like I can't be in the same room with them. Eh, you can. I can't do this. Eh, you can. Yeah. You know. I think like, she said like they both have to uh, like they both own the house. Sure. And so they both have to agree on what happens to it. And she's like, we don't agree. Well, so Tom told me in Special Forces that he was trying to buy her out. And he was trying to get the ball rolling on some way or another. Mm -hmm. And that she just kind of refused to have conversations with him about it. Mm -hmm. So it was like she wasn't willing to do anything. Gotcha. She wasn't willing to talk to him about doing it. So Tom was like, well, what are we going to do? I mean, so t again, whether you want to believe Tom Sandoval or not, right, is entirely up to you. But from his mouth, he has claimed that he's been trying to get some movement regarding this house. I think he wanted to stay. Maybe she wanted to stay as well. But right. he wasn't. He just she. Well, she he, has like a new boyfriend ignored. and Moving everything. Sucks. I also can't imagine like her, what she went through and then having to like move into like a shitty apartment. Like downsides, yeah. you know, I like, can imagine again, I had to move with grandma. I know, yeah. but Tom, she was like, <laughs> Tom doesn't have enough friends to help move. No one from Vanderpump's <laughs> no going to rent a U-Haul. <laughs> yeah. Shorts would for sure. He'd Shorts, carry everything shorts. on his back. Out, shorts out that would door. show up hungover. <laughs> yeah. And, and give directions to the movers. That's I don't think true. he'd actually help. Well, if you want to know what Shay is doing, Allie just texted <laughs> it to me. He left the show after season five okay. when they split up. Now it seems like he's still on the same career path as his official Twitter bio labels him as a rapper, producer, and DJ. He's a rapper? Hmm. Self-proclaimed. Huh. Does he Self have any music? Uh, um, he has not posted on Twitter since 2019. And his oh. verified Instagram oh, account no. is also private. Oh, no. So, hmm. Maybe it's his protest against Elon. 
Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to use the app anymore. But <laughs> I liked it better when it was Twitter. <laughs> I might get attacked for saying this, but, um, and I don't mean to make light of anyone's trauma and what Ariana went through, but is Tom cheating the best thing that's ever happened, not only to her, but the entire cast without, of this show? Without question. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I yeah. think I that, I think Andy Cohen asked her that on Watch What Happens Live. And he was like, so thank you, Tom. And she was like, thank you, universe. Which like, is a great answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. No, because I don't think Tom deserves any credit. Yeah. Totally. You know, but to- yeah. But also, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, like, then that's the that's the frustrating part about Tom Sandoval is that he has no problem giving himself credit. Oh, yeah. You know, simultaneously, all while, you know, when I was on Special Force with him, I had a a, a long talk with him that I've always hoped to have with him on this couch. We haven't been able to come in under an agreement. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we, he was going to come on, and then he had some. What are the terms? Yeah, what he, can you not say? Cannot he talk a, about Rachel. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about Rachel <laughs> or Scandal in general. I was like, well, well. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm like, bro. I've been very publicly critical of you. Like, I've gotten to know you on Special Forces. I yeah. think there's like a a decent conversation. I really wanted to have a conversation around like, where are you now? Like, like, why should we believe that you've learned from this? Or are you a better person for it? Yeah. What kind of conversations do you want to have with your next partner about like what you've learned from this experience? Like Lala, I said, I told Tom, I'm like, you know, listen, I'm not here to diagnose you. I know the world's calling you a narcissist. Certainly Lala has. Mm. But what I do agree with Lala is, well, I don't know if you're a dangerous person. I think it'd be dangerous for me to set you up with a friend. Yeah. You know, and so I would love to learn. I would love to talk to Tom Sandoval about like, has he done anything? Because I, I people can make mistakes. Tom isn't the only one who's fucking done shit like this. Totally. And people have redeemed themselves. People have used terrible situations to like look in the mirror and go, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I this isn't the person I want to be. And, you know, Tom said that. Rachel said that. Some people actually do something about it. Some people don't. And I'm curious like, as whether as Tom has. I, I just think it's like in the way he reacts to things that just even if he's saying the right things, the way he says it is just so annoying that I'm like, yeah. what? Are, I don't like, think he actually thinks in, that. I don't think he's sincere about what I he's saying. I don't think he thinks cheating is. I think he knows it's wrong. I think he thinks like I'd like to think I wouldn't do it, but I don't think he thinks it's that big of a deal. Right. I also think he feels very justified. I think he's like, I did, but you guys don't understand all the reason. And yeah. like, it just, it still doesn't make it like yeah. break up with the person if you don't want to be with them. No, totally. like, and I think that he feels justified in his actions. And I do think he is when he, when, when his friends are down bad on him, I do think he gets frustrated that he's not getting enough credit for their success that their experience as a result of Vander, of, of Scandal. Ah. Right. Uh. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, that That's just an assumption. OK. Yeah. But I think back to what you said before is like, I'm sure it's I in my experience, adulthood is realizing that people, even though they're not great people, can also be right. And yeah. I think he's having a really hard time reconciling, like, aren't we all scoundrels? Like, yeah. What's happening here? <laughs> like, yeah. How much can you yeah. guys beat me up at this point? Because we're all guilty in some way or another. If I'm Scandival, I would, if I'm, yeah, Sandoval, Sandoval <laughs> whatever. If I'm Tom, I would be, I would be frustrated by the righteousness in the of democracy I of agree. my peers because they have all done, like, is equally low character yes. things. And <laughs> at that point, like, to sit there and say, well, mine isn't as bad as yours. I, how do you get, in what world yeah. of, this delusion just really do you get to say that like on another level and it is you're right it's the same thing that they do every season but for some reason people cared so much more than sheena time. and like sheena crying about you know this is how 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 hard this has been on her right she's got her her as good as gold had a second life because when of Scandival. Uber, Uber was like, I want to put your song that everyone forgot existed. It's 10 years old and we're going to make it into a national commercial. Did her husband produce that? <gasps> I'm wondering if he did. Maybe he's wonder, just he probably got some money. Got, did Shay get some money? I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm just wondering. Just Lala and, and, and Sheena's podcast. Yeah. 
one didn't exist. The other one wasn't very popular. I and think shenanigans. Sheena's, shenanigans. I think, shit existed. I think Lala started hers. I could be wrong. I think you're wrong. Give them Lala. I think she had before Scandival. Well, I think they've all, but since Scandival, have it definitely totally blew up. Blew up. Yeah. So it is, you know, it is Thanks fascinating. The uh, I mean, how uh, how many seasons of this show exist without Scandival? Like, what was left? A season? Are, right. Many people, it, we would, some argued we wouldn't get to 11 without it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and I'm a day one fan. I've watched from the beginning. Like, I love it. And I just... I wasn't on it. I yeah. just was like, I just don't really care. It's not as interesting. You you got rid of a lot of the cast members who brought the drama, the meat to the show. Kristen, Stassi, Jax. You, you got rid of a lot of like those. So I was just like, I don't think I care anymore. And then, yeah, Scandal happens. I'm like, I have to do this. Gotta tune in. I have to see what but happens. It's the reason I think why like, and I, I'm a day one Jersey Shore fan, but <laughs> similarly, it's not as exciting with yeah. family and kids. This is why Below Deck will always be good because you can't have a family on a boat. You no, love you, you below like Below Deck. He loves Below Deck. Love below. Also, Shaws of Sunset. Josh is like, R.I.P. cried <gasps> when it Miss went it. off who the all, air. Who else here on loves Below Deck? Someone, Jer Jeremy Allen White also Respect. shares in your guilty pleasure of Below Deck. Love below him. Deck is fun. I do like Below Deck as well. Really? Mm -hmm. I cannot. Allie's obsessed with it. I cannot get into it. I have, I have uh, something to break here oh my god here about jeremy allen white is that once Stop. we were on a flight together and we landed it was a red eye and we both went to the bathroom after <gasps> and he not only put cold water on his face but he had he brought a mist and he gave himself a little mist and i was like that's so smart how do you know that he just looked i watched it you were in the, you were in that small no no not on the plane oh, after <laughs> the yeah. airport i was like oh okay <laughs> so Wait, you're bringing that. something else yeah. out the box that never happened <laughs> yeah. i was like well, how smart he looks so refreshed wow it's like he hadn't even been on a uh, red eye uh, you heard i wonder first. what he used you're welcome yeah I, I yeah i wonder you should ask mm. dr could Hauschka. i have some of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> If you still have some last minute shopping to do before December 25th, don't worry. Our show sponsors Highland Titles have you covered with an incredibly popular downloadable gift. Imagine that you, yes, you can be a lord or lady for just $30. Buy a plot of land from highlandtitles.com will allow you to make use of a Scottish tradition in which landowners are given a courtesy title. Babe, do you want to be? I was about to say, I know what I'm asking for for Christmas. This is iconic. <laughs> All you need to do is buy one square foot of land from Highland Titles Estate in Scotland for just $30 and you'll become a lord or lady of the Glen. You'll get a legal right of ownership to your land, which you can visit any time. But babe, we can take our daughter there. <gasps> oh my gosh, you'll have to refer to me as Lady Natalie. L Lady Natalie. Upon your order, you will receive details of a plot by email along with a link to take you to your exact location of your plot on Google Maps. You can take a 360-degree tour of the land and download a personalized certificate confirming your right to style yourself as a lord or lady of the Glen. This would be a great gift for someone who's like obsessed with the royals. Ah, yes, you know. of which there are many listening to this show. Check it out at HighlandTitles.com and use the discount code VILEFILES to get 25% off your order. Me Undies. Me Undies is uh, a top notch underwear. I have found that other high end underwears, they don't maintain. Mm. You pay for the, uh, the loose, the breathable fabric, and you, brew, you pay for the um, thinness. But that thinness also. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, but not me undies. They look brand new, and yet I've worn them for quite some time. They keep their uh, form. I don't know what I'm trying to say other than they're a fantastic pair of underwear. Plus, me undies has such a variety of different underwears. I'm a, I'm a basic man, as, as many of you might have guessed. I have just a bunch of black pairs of me undies. But if you are more fun than me, you can get a variety of designs, all sorts, holiday designs. Me undies' signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug. Have a warm hug in the uh, under area. Who wouldn't Honestly, want that? Honestly, what a great place to what get a, a hug. What, what a great way, place to get a warm hug. Me Undies isn't just about underwear. Explore the lounge collection featuring comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. But truly, their underwear is truly great. Me Undies fabric is light and breathable to help regulate your body temperature so you can stay cool and comfy. And if you want uh, to do some matching with your loved ones, you all can get the same underwear. You know, just a group of people wearing identical underwear. 
Maybe just for you and your partner. Let's what like, a way to feel connected. What a way to feel connected. Get that warm hug in all the right spots. Knock out your holiday shopping today and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's MeUndies.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 20% off, plus free shipping. Me Undies comfort from the outside in. Speaking of uh, Jersey Shore, uh, Mike, the situation talks about orgies he used to have with Vinny and Polly D. Did, were you aware Yuck. of no this? Yeah. But are you shocked? No, <laughs> no. I, I'm shocked. Honestly, a little. An orgy. He, I'm a little shocked by that. <laughs> yeah, he really? says their uh, personalities like are all just so. Josh is. I, he's not lying when he says he's a big like. He hosted a reunion or something with them once like a watch like a, a watch, watch what part- happened like an yeah. after party show and josh yeah. would not typically like say yes to something like that and he's like Paige, i'm hosting I this to. i have to do it and he like got to meet some of them I, Vinny I, uh, and my Bunny. first reality tv experience with a reality tv celebrity before i was involved in reality tv or a fan of any reality mm-hmm. tv because i never watched it any reality TV before I was ever on the show. And I was uh, in Milwaukee where I used to live and I, it was winter and I was getting ready to go for a trip to somewhere warm. And as people often do in cold weather climates, they will visit the tanning salons. Ah. And I was in there GTA. getting ready for my uh, tan. Mm-hmm. You and went and laid in a bed. I laid in a bed. Yeah, this was Josh, getting there. You yeah. lay in beds. This is maybe You're there. You're there. Close. maintenance. This is, <laughs> Almost 20 years ago. Damn. I know. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> and uh, some guy was in the lobby walking out, and I had never seen Jersey Shore, but I was obviously familiar with it as it was a phenomenon. And I remember thinking to myself, who's this Jersey Shore motherfucking looking guy in Milwaukee? Just thinking he was some wannabe Jersey Shore. And the guy walks out, and the girl working in the counter, she goes, that was Pauly D. <gasps> And I'm like, who's Polly D? And she was like, on Jersey Shore. And he signed it, Polly, like he signed his release, you know, Polly D. And I thought it was, he was in town to DJ. Oh, so, and I, and I, so I got to see Polly D at a tanning salon in, GTL. in Milwaukee, GTL. Wisconsin. But he's my, never changed his hair never. to this day. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, <laughs> we've, he, what? Everyone else is, you know, Snooki got rid of the poof and all the things. And everyone's been like, okay, that was us when we were young. And now he's never gotten rid of it. He's like, no, it's working for me. It's working. Mike, the situation says a threesome was a slow night. Oh, wow. A lot of the times it was upwards to six to 10 women in the room at a time. Again, a lot of the times, feasibly, that's not realistic to accomplish said goal. What, it was, what is the goal? What is the goal? Uh, my eyes were definitely bigger than my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so not the same. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wrong. The Which, situation uh, believes there were multiple situations in the bedroom with Vinny and Pauly D during the early days of their Jersey Shore fame. He recently tallied how many sex parties the boys threw back in the day. Anyways, they had orgies. I never want to have like group sex with my buddies. <laughs> no. That never really appealed to me. Did... No. That's no, just, right? it just, the whole thing is so, I mean, I, I guess I'm just shocked by their personality. Like, I, I get the feeling that they all had their friendship. Like, for sure, they were friends. But, like, they kind of always have all hated each other. Seemed very different. You'd think, like, maybe outside of the show, they're not not as tight as, right. you know, they, they they are. Yeah. So well, that's that just a little seems like But they, they seem real tight. Close. They all seem like close. selfish very lovers. Tight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Six to ten women in a room. It's a lot of chlamydia. <laughs> I'm just picturing a lot of Z packs going around. <laughs> what was the bar? They Karma. Karma. Just pick up a oh couple God. girls at Karma. Bring oh, them back. Karma. I've been to a couple clubs called Karma. Really? I wonder if those Jersey women Shore. are still like, I had an orgy with Jersey. Shore. Like, I wonder if they Probably. still bring it up. That, uh, that's 100%. a fun. That's a fun one to watch back from the beginning. Like, yes. Seemed just like a completely different world. If you if you when, if you're bored, you should watch that one. For the Natalie. Beginning. When now I first got weren't not first well in early in our relationship after she had moved I I was presenting at the MTV awards good mm. day it was our first like good day public red carpet I have you know and uh, they had us at a table with uh, Snooky and Jay Wow Snooky and Jay Wow and, and I was Na- like, Natalie almost had a meltdown I, I went like, too this is insane we Were saw Jay Wow nice? at, at the so local nice. fair mm-hmm. recently with her. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Wow. We took a picture together and then we saw Jay Wow at the variety event. She was like, Hi, I love you. And I was like, God, I love you so much. It's so crazy. You. I know. She's like, I want to touch your belly. 
which everyone's always like, oh my God, I'm sure everyone says this, but like, can I? And I'm like, no one ever uh, offers yeah. or tries or what? Do I not have an appealing <laughs> belly? Like, what's wrong? And Allie's always wearing it out. Always. I yeah. think I think that people now have heard so much that like this is like you, you're never supposed to ask. Like, don't ask. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. That now people probably are just like, I'm not even going to ask. What if it's strangers? Yeah. Strangers? Well, I guess Wow. I mean, I'm, you know. You definitely don't like. If it's I mean, Jay Wow, you're like, please. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm begging you to touch my stomach. <laughs> Bless my child. Please. Please. <laughs> yeah. I. I, strangers are asking people like people they don't know are like can like I just on the touch street in the grocery store no that would definitely That'd be weird yeah be crazy I guess I could see it happening I will say I thought I went into labor this weekend while you were in Vegas this was like a week ago maybe too far and ago. I was sleeping Nick had gone to work and I'm laying in bed and all of a sudden I get the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Mm. And I'm like, I have gone into labor. My this, water this has broke. I'm like looking around and like my water has broke. So I'm like, okay, I need to like stand up. I stand. I get taken to the floor. I'm in so much pain. How scary. So scary. I call my doctor. Of course, I get like her assistant. Mm. And I'm like, I have a terrible. This is a safe space. Right? Very. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Josh, very. <laughs> Tell me more. Just like, wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah. This is good. This, this is transitioning this is... to 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 gas problems, and I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I have the sharpest pain in my asshole, <laughs> and I don't know. Is she coming out of my? Something's wrong. She's coming out. My... And she's like, No, it's a hemorrhoid. I'm like, It's not. I've never had one before. But I was but asleep. This, isn't that. Yeah. this is internal. <laughs> this is happening inside of my body. And she's like, let me, um, we'll just have the doctor call you. Like, okay. So it happens. It goes on for like 20 minutes. And I truly think. Just nonstop. It's no breaks in between. It's just like constant. Uh, slight pain. breaks. Okay. Yeah. Slight breaks. But doctor says, I tell her everything. I'm like, this is what's going on. I have a sharp pain. I've got pressure. Something's wrong with me. And she's like, oh, it's rectal spasms. Super normal. No I'm like, big deal. Super normal. What do you mean? That's super normal. She's like, yeah, Happens don't worry about time. it. Baby's head's down. Just causing some pressure, pushing on some nerves. Wouldn't worry about it. You're good. I'm like, <laughs> OK, like everyone. You're like, so I just deal with this. Literally, yeah. everyone tells you like, just wait until you're not sleeping. Oh, just wait until like, yeah. You know, Scaring no one you. ever says just wait for the rectal spasms. <laughs> no one ever fucking tells you that. Well, also people, I feel like, say that you that's where you like feel when you're having contractions. Like, and so you probably freaked out. You I like, did. Wait, I was like, this I, I, this, I'm going into labor. Yeah. And this feels too early to go into labor. How many weeks are you? Do we, are we allowed to talk about that? Okay. Yeah, that would have been terrible. early. Yeah. It was so scary. But, but it's like, who... Why there's so much around pregnancy that no one talks about. Talks about. Yeah. It's it's really you'll you'll have things happening like constantly. You're like, oh my God, what is this? And everyone's like, oh my gosh, that happened to me for the first like three weeks. You're fine. And then it goes away. And then you're like, I, I always is it just gonna be nine months of thinking that something's like wrong? Something's wrong. Yeah. And I call my doctor, nope, it's normal. That's normal. normal. <laughs> Don't worry about it, babe. That's normal. Like, what do you mean this? Why you're like you can know that for sure without seeing me. You yeah. can just tell me on the phone. <laughs> How do you know that this knife that is inside yeah. of my and it just went away? Is normal. And it just yeah. went away. And it never, never came happened. Back. Yeah. Well, thank God. Thank God. Bless. But like, how terrifying! And I'm just like so nervous for the rest to come. Are you scared that you're gonna poop when you deliver? Yes. Yeah, I I know a lot of people say that that's like a scare. I told Nick that I was. He was like, "What are you like most nervous about for labor?" And I was like shitting all over the all place over, yeah. yeah i would be right like yeah. that just seems why that why would you do that i've I would, heard they're just very professional like they just like wipe clean, it all yeah. up yeah yeah no big deal like it never happened do you plan on like i'll be watching kissing her forehead what's... i'll be kissing her forehead. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Like so he, he want to know anyway yeah. right right i'm not one of those like catch the baby yeah yeah no, how like, involved were you Josh? i was well i had a c-section page had a c-section <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah I was up by the head, which is uh, 
It's it's amazing, right? Because as the father, they put you outside and they go, we're going to prep your wife for surgery, hang out 20, 30 minutes, then we'll bring you in when everything's ready to go. So you're just out there with your thoughts. And I'm like, this is it. Like, everything changes. He's then, just out there. Like, Are I'm like, sure I'm in there with a bunch of doctors and they're putting needles. I mean, I'm sitting there by myself. But it's I'm cold. So, I'm so sorry. You had no, to be in the hallway hard, by I mean. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Please let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> And no, and then they give you they give you painters overalls, right? Because they don't want to give you scrubs so that they'll confuse you with someone who's not an idiot. So you put on these overalls and you walk in and you're like, what's good? Like, let's have this baby. I'm like, push. They're like, it's a C-section. You don't push. And then I just remember trying to kiss the forehead and just be as motivating or as quiet as she needed me to be. And then, if I may share, I remember that you had had a shoulder, like you got shoulder pain mm-hmm. in the middle of delivering. And obviously, and then as soon as the baby came out and it seemed like it was basically like deferred pain because you can't feel anything, obviously. So it went to her shoulder. And I remember I looked at the anesthesiologist and I'm like, hit her. And I just see him push morphine into her IV, like the moment that the baby was disconnected and, and unaffected. And I was like, give her the sleep, sleep, now, <laughs> yeah. my, my, my sweet girl. My sweet angel. <laughs> I will sweet. take the baby. You, you've worked hard. <laughs> yeah, you've done your part. Yeah. Thank you. I will tap in. I did one C-section in my clinical rotations and passed out. Yeah. And oh, um, no. I, it was so bad because it was before It was while she was getting the spinal tap. Mm. So she was like awake and looking at me and I was watching the spinal tap happen. And yeah, you have to wear like boots and and the gown and it was the lights and I was watching this long needle go into her spine Mm. and I went down. She saw me. They took me out, put me in a wheelchair. They're like, here's some water, like breathe. Are you okay? The doctor then comes and he like looks at me, goes into the OR and I'm like, I think I'm okay. I'm good. I can do this. So I go back in and he's like, weren't you? Just outside in a wheelchair. I'm like, well, don't, don't worry about it. I'm like scrubbing. I'm like, we're, we're ready to go. This poor woman is laying on the bed like, um. She's like, why'd you pass out? Yeah, she's I need like, you why to are feel you putting on sterile gloves? What are you about to do? You just <laughs> fell onto the ground. <laughs> but it was so, it was yeah, so intense. It's really intense. Is there, I guess I should know this. Is there a difference between like an epidural and a spinal in terms of like, I don't know, the needle and stuff or severity. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I've never because I had the opportunity to be in the labor and delivery. And I was like, um, I'm good. Yeah, I think I'll just go in blindly when I'm ready at some point. Yeah. I choose to have kids. I had an epidural and I I'm like terrified of like my whole life. I was so scared of having babies. I was like, this is like that's like one thing that I would always think about, like one day I'm going to have to have babies. And that's so scary to me. And the needle, the epidural, the whole thing, like I hate needles. And I just remember halfway through, I was like, I, I'm good. I don't need to feel anymore. Yeah, we can do it. And they did it. And you just feel a little pinch and you're like, OK, it's but fine. then you you like know what they're doing. And you're like, just don't think about it. But I got an epidural the first time because I was in labor. And then I had a C-section after like 30 hours of labor. And then Stop. the second time they just like wheeled me right in and gave me the spinal. And I I remember the spinal. <laughs> I felt it a little more than the epidural, probably because I was in less pain because I wasn't in labor. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's like in really crazy. For 30 hours, mm, 20, 28 hours. <sighs> yeah. And then you still chose to have another kid. Yeah. Wow. Well, the you second kind of C-section is a lot different. It's like so much easier when you don't have the trauma of like an emergency and Mm -hmm. being in labor and having to recover from both of those. It's like a lot nicer to just like know what you're doing. So did you have like a, a, oh my God, my water just broke? No, you didn't. Mm -mm. Well, I, the baby was breached. And so they were like, you're going in on Friday, you're going to have a C-section. And then I went in and I was like, the baby flipped last night. And they were like, that's actually not possible at this stage in pregnancy. I was like, no, I'm telling you, he flipped. And they did an ultrasound. They're like, oh, my God, he's head down. Stop. And so I was like, OK, well, but I, I'm still having him. Right. And they were like, no, we have to induce you because now that we know he can move, like we got to get going. And so they induced me and he did just didn't he didn't want to come out. I mean, he did, but he got stuck and then it was the whole thing. So then, oh yeah, we did God. a C-section. And I was like, I Wish we would have just done this at the beginning yeah. when I was prepared for it mentally all week. But 
it was it was funny because it was right by New Year's Eve, and our our doctor, who's um, Paige's doctor, who's amazing, was like, "Okay, so the only thing is like I take off two days a year, and one of them happens to be New Year's Day. So if for some reason things get held over, I have the doctor who who delivered my baby covering me. Like if I trusted anyone more, okay, it would that's be like good. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, but." I'm going to be here like your your delivery day is three days prior to that. We should be. And so they decide to do the C-section. Gary, Kristen Doty's ex, his younger brother Len's there with me coming to visit. And she goes, I think we should do a C-section. It's been long enough. Let's get this baby out. And Paige is like getting prepared. And Len's like, let's go smoke a cigarette. I'm like, <laughs> I don't smoke. He's like, you'll need to for this. <laughs> and so we're outside of the hospital, 500 feet away. I actually didn't know this. I like didn't know that you left to go smoke a cigarette for a second. <laughs> Dude, and Len is downstairs going, you know, bro, these these doctors, bro, they rush everything, bro. Can't let nature take its course. I'm like, shut up. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> it turned out fine. Everything turned uh, out everyone's fine. okay. Yeah, everyone's good. Do you everyone's have any good. advice for me, Josh? Okay. My only advice that I give all unsolicited advice, but it's solicited now, that my friend Jeff gave me, because I was you know, going on some neurotic tirade of maybe it'll be this, maybe it'll be that. If the kid needs this, if the kid needs that, he goes, stop it. He goes, you have no idea what your kid will need. He's like, all you need to know is it's going to be great. It's just going to be great. And any temporary inconvenience, like some loss of sleep, or maybe you can't go to brunch (laughs) is so wildly overshadowed by how great it is. And, uh, and I've I've found that to be very true. Mm. Yeah, I love it. I love that because that's kind of the mentality that Natalie and I have been uh, taking. It's just like we haven't done all this like over prep or like reading all this shit. I think we're pretty informed, but we're like we'll figure it out yeah, and like you figure it out. And not to sound you know, and maybe there's a lot of like parents out there who are gonna laugh, but I'm just like I'm looking forward to a couple sleepless nights, or, like just that that moment where like where I have to get up and do something for yeah. our baby and it's like 4 a.m. and I am tired and I got to get up. Like, I'm going to be thinking, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Because yeah. you always hear yeah. about those moments and yeah, I'll be tired and yeah, I'll of like course. be frustrated. But I'll, like, it'll be like a, like, oh, this is what, like, this is what I've heard about my whole life. Yeah. I, I feel like that will be cool. I mean, I'm eventually, sure, I'll get, You'll get ti- tired yeah. of it. But I think we're just planning on embracing all the, Holy shit, we're parent moments. Yeah. You know, parent, oh, yeah. you know. People love to scare you about like not sleeping and doing all the things. I mean, at the beginning, you're like, this is like, you don't want to sleep. That's you're what you're so saying. like, I'm like, so excited. I just want to like, look at her the whole time. Baby. Yeah. 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 Like, this is so cool. And then, you know, you get tired. But I think the thing you learn after you go through it the first time and then you have another one is just that like everything is a phase. Truly, you're like. I'm never going to sleep again. You're up in the middle of the night. You're holding the baby. You're crying. You're like, I'm so tired. And then you're like, a week later, there's a couple more hours in between each stretch and you get a little more sleep and you're like, all right, it's not so bad. You know, like everything, the weeks feel a little longer. You're like, this has been happening for months, but it's been like a week and it's fine. And and it's all, you're going to sleep again. You're going to, you know, your baby will start sleeping longer and you'll get some more freedom back. And, you know, it, it, passes and it's so fast the second time specifically i'm like where did that last year go but yeah i have a question Mm. where do you eat cereal josh if you (gasps) can't eat it in front of Paige? in my office in his office (laughs) (laughs) why can't he eat cereal in front of because i love my husband he has a jaw (laughs) condition and i and a love of crunchy food and i oh it pops it pops i kind of can you hear it hear it Oh, oh my god, yes. I, do it again. Do it again. Oh. Oh my god. I'm open for no. for a Botox sponsorship for my <laughs> yeah. TMJ, oh please. My At night, it's like all night long and I'm like, you need to go sleep in the guest room. I can hear you know, it all night long. My weird guilty pleasure is listening to people chew on movies. Like I movie scenes where they're eating. Oh no, no, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, not yeah. for me. Like Hunt for October, one of the best eating scenes in cinematic <laughs> history. With, with Gene Hackman and Denzel? No, that's Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide. No. What's Hunt for Red October? Sean Connery. Mm. He's a Russian gotcha. submarine commander, Alec Baldwin. Great. And, and Sean Connery's talking to his crew 
about their mission and he's chewing on some meat and I, I don't love it. I don't know. It's weird. I'm a fucking weirdo. I can't. I can't but stand like a, it. There's certain people too, but it's just like the sound of it really, one of them. Yeah, yeah, really just sends shivers down my spine. Like I, I feel bad about it because you were the first person that sent me. There was this article. It was like, Paige makes Josh eat cereal in a different room. And I'm like, Shout out us weekly. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I do. And everybody in my life started sending it to me being like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Truly. Mostly because people are like, I didn't even know he was married. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm so like, this is such a random article. But it shows a great photo of you. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. Thank God. Pre-kids. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's true. And I feel bad about it because I was like, this is going to make this is what a great impression I'm making. But it's true. I can't I can't stand it. Somebody ate green beans in the room when I had the baby and it was it. I've never felt I just had surgery. I haven't slept. I somebody decides to start digging in with their hands and the food. And is there oh anything I, about Paige? I, I Josh, just that <laughs> plenty you just can't <laughs> deal with. No, she's the best. <laughs> she's no, perfect. We were fighting on the way over here because oh, right, 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 right. he was driving and um, my Celsius was in the thing and it spilled a little in his car. And he was like, only you. And I was like, what does that mean? He's <laughs> like, you just drink so slow that I'm like, take a couple of big gulps. Get it down. Get a little. It down. Yeah. It's, we're, I mean, we're teetering on the edge here. Ninety <laughs> yeah. percent full. Yeah, that was the, I was like, what? Like we were going to get a full <laughs> argument in the carpool line at school because I don't drink. My drink's fast enough. For Josh. Sorry. That's when I realized that because I'm I'm a sober guy and at like what normal drinking is in quotes because like I've seen Paige drink half a margarita. And I'm like, what are you nuts? I'm like <laughs> half. I'm like, I'm, we're drinking for effect here. And she's like, yeah. I'm drinking for taste. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like drinking decaf. Like who does that? Yeah. We drink My decaf. Wife. We drink decaf, and That's I like, and I drink half a margarita. Drink. Right. You guys are healthy. Now, Nally would waste way more alcohol than she's ever consumed. Oh, yeah. She'd just so take good. a sip and put it down, which I love. I don't find there would be a bigger turnoff than a drunk. Drunk. But drunk I have people in general. And since I don't Me date too. men, um, drunk, drunk women, drunk women yeah. you know, like I, it's, I've I never, never been attracted I, to the drunken type. I agree. I yeah. never realized that till Josh and I started dating. I was 20, 20, yeah, 20 at the time. And I remember he was like, I'm sober. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be boring. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> how is this going to work? And then I quickly realized I was like, oh, I can't stand. That's like been such a thing that I didn't know was a thing. I can't stand drunk people. It was like immediate ick for lack of better, better term. I you love that. When people say ick, he hates it. <laughs> Can we <laughs> tell them about our, our first date that was, well, yeah, first official date that wasn't far from here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And you were 20 and I was 24. We go to the movies. Twilight. Right on the corner. We went Twilight. and we saw Twilight. It was like a joke. And then uh, he couldn't tell if I was joking. So he got the tickets anyway. <laughs> no, no. And then we went. Jacob it, or? Uh, Edward. 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 I think I'm an Edward. Sorry, Taylor. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor's been on my pod and it did really well. So I'm a Jacob guy. Until, <laughs> I mean, unless yeah, our yeah. dad wants to come on. You did well Rob for Bats. us too. But. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a vampire than a yeah. werewolf. I get that. Yeah. But we were we were just going for a walk after the movie and I said, Oh, do you want to go get a drink? Uh, because there was this coffee shop that I like right on the corner of Crave, corner of Van You, Ives, you said, Do you want to get a drink? And he's older than I am. So he was a little bit older. And I just like I was like, Oh my God. He <laughs> thinks like <gasps> I'm literally twenty years old and I was like, I'm twenty, but I'm turning twenty one soon. And I like don't have an idea or anything. I'll be, and I was like, he's probably gonna be like, you're only 20 years old like, and done. freak out. Yeah. yeah. But he was like, no, I meant a hot chocolate. <gasps> and then we went and got a hot chocolate oh, and a red cute. velvet cupcake. It's cute. We got a cupcake yeah. too. Yeah, we did. We did. <gasps> That's cute. Why? Oh, why are you sober? Is it just you just hate alcohol, or did you have like a terrible experience? Because I have an allergy and. Every time I drink, I break out in handcuffs. No, it's a <laughs> um, I'm in the back of a cop car. It's, <laughs> it's the craziest easy. thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cliche. I'm. It just doesn't, doesn't suit me well. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, I've been sober 15 years. Crazy since 21. So you turned 
a legal age to drink and you're like i'm good like yeah this. I've is already it just alcohol <laughs> I've do you partake my... in any other no nothing oh. no math no no tweak Not anymore. No, <laughs> no tina as they uh, say in some circles oh, wow. All right, yeah. tina. <laughs> no go fast how you do know you f- a lot of slang <laughs> for the yeah. drugs <laughs> how do you feel about memoirs uh i wrote one oh <laughs> I so think, he loves it. Yeah. Well, I think it's the most millennial shit I've ever done is to be like at 35. I think a memoir. It's time. I've lived enough. <laughs> yeah. Life. It wasn't really memoir though. It was kind of right. Yeah. It was like more self t- technically self in the self-help genre. Yeah. It was I'm familiar with your book. Yeah. It's a good book. Well, we we chatted yeah, about we it did. the first time. And uh that I think the desire was A to make a a self-help book sort of um masquerading as a memoir right like that was the way in but really i just wanted to share these things that had helped me along my path and then also i feel like memoirs usually people write them when they're done and so they can put a fine point on things and be like look how well i've done and for me it was like look what i've been through and i've had some wins and losses but this is like views from the halfway point and this is everything i've learned up until now and and what i hope to do with the next 30 years how do you feel about uh, memoirs are masqueraded as tell-alls or vice versa. Tell-alls masqueraded as memoirs. Oh, I don't know. Like your boy, John Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, would you consider it? To, I well, read I it. Haven't, you have read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, so, well, it's, he's created some noise with Jerry O'Connell, who <laughs> yes. is now married to his ex-wife, formerly known as Rebecca Romaine Stamos. Yes. Now Rebecca Romaine O'Connell. Right? Am I getting that yeah. right? Yeah, is yeah, right? you're right. Yeah. Jerry's mad at John. Gotcha. That sounds fun Which, to say. He's, I, I would say. What did he write about her? I think he pro. I, I think he was first go buy his book, but I think he was just kind of honest with the challenges that come up when you go through divorce, and I'm sure that you know both of them had uh, their part in things. And I would expect the new husband to be perturbed with the ex kind of putting airing out what happened to public. I mean. Oh, yeah, that seems pretty normal. Jerry trying to be a good husband probably doesn't mean I'm Team Jerry. Team Stamos always. Fuck that bitch. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I get your for life. I get your I get your JS for life, but like, I don't know. How do you feel what about, he necessarily yeah. said? I think he I think he said that like at the time, he felt like she was just like she was the reason for everything. It was awful the divorce and whatever. And I think mm. I think he. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think what he comes to say is that like that was how he felt at that time. And he kind of held on to that for years. And now as he's like an older and he's in a new relationship, he realizes that he also had a part in it. And it, oh, thank he, God. I think yeah. that that's what he says. <laughs> but I also think that Jerry's like, uh, I don't know what he said. Actually, well, at least he but. did say that. I think it's just because like tell alls in general, I'm assuming that at some point I've been a part of one that was like very bachelor nation, mm-hmm. but it's definitely a, you know, their version of accounts right. type of thing. Right. Totally. And I'm I'm pretty sure that, I don't know, five, ten, fifteen years from now, uh, when it all goes to shit from people I've been on TV with who might have had an experience or two with me and other people. They'll talk might, about it. Might choose to write their version of accounts. Right. And it's definitely their version. And the people I'm thinking about have a tendency of coloring their version. Mm. And you know whatever Paint them in a yeah. better light, or, drunken haze they were in. Uh, well said, you know. Right during what time? It's just like the whole. It's just it. It sucks when you are a part of someone's version of accounts while they're under duress, or you know, or or getting paid to write the most scandalous things. It's like you have to respond to something a you don't even want to respond to or not. Res- and then your choice is to respond or not respond. Respond right. is to just let them say whatever the hell and respond is to give it more attention. Yeah. If you don't want to give it sure. more attention. Right. It's just kind of obnoxious. Yeah. And it's also the new husband talking about like, you know, sticking up sure. for it's not even her really from her mouth. Like he's I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I would definitely want. Him to stick Nick up to st- yeah. If like my ex writes a tell all and he's like his side of you know yeah how things went and it's obviously I have a different version right. I would you know if I didn't say anything <sighs> yeah. Nick being like I think John I wonder, if, I wonder if John had to write about it. He, I think you have. I think it was a big part of his life and it was public right. And if you're gonna write a tell all you you gotta you gotta tell tell all 
I I think yeah, and uh, my favorite quote that I overuse is the the rim of the universe is long, but it tends to bend towards justice. I've never heard you say that. <laughs> You drink it in because it's good. <laughs> but it's true. Like, you have to give things time. But I feel like, to your point, people, like, your character is your fate. And people reveal themselves over time, which is, uh, anytime I've gotten into any kind of, like, controversy or scandal or or into a fight with someone publicly, I feel like the best thing I've been able to do is have restraint of pen and tongue. Like, not lash out or defend my side because it just foments it and makes it bigger and more things to attach to and just say, in time, I hope who I really am becomes clear yeah. and who they really are becomes clear. And it it's almost always the case. Yeah. No, I was, well, I said this on Vile Files Plus when we were talking, doing our pop extra, but like we talk a, about a lot of people on this show uh. who are reality TV. Mm. And sometimes that comes with a critique or two, not more about like how they come across like on the show, like Kristen who she is on TV versus in person. Sure. Hopefully, probably two different entirely people. Yeah. And we're always kind of critiquing the television character, not the person, especially if we haven't met them. So a lot of people listening or will ask questions, be like, you must not really like so-and-so, or you do you really hate this person? And I always think to myself, what's funny is like, if I, no, I, I'm sure they're just fine. If I don't like you, especially on this show, I just don't talk about you. Right. Like the people I don't care for, I don't use my show to give them attention, whether it's criticism or not. Right. Because yeah. like it's they it's don't like they Sandoval, don't know the difference. Yeah. And you met him and you were like, no, like I I have nothing against you have, personally. Yeah. yeah it's I just, don't agree with him. And yeah. there's some things about his choices like I'm not in line with type of thing. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't have a personal thing against the guy. And yeah. He's not without, you know, positive qualities like. You know, things yeah. aren't black and white, but like it's always like the people also, you can tell who I don't show. like if I stop talking about them on this show. Yeah. Interesting. So take that audience. Yeah. yeah. Figure it out. I, <laughs> I put P's and Q's together. We talk I, about you all the time, Josh. <laughs> Neutrophil. No, I love Neutrophil. <laughs> I literally love Neutrophil. I used it all before I got pregnant. I actually saw the biggest change in my hair that I've ever seen before. I've always had thin, stringy hair. And for the first time ever, it was thick. It was luxurious. Did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women, babes? It's not just you. No. You're, not, you're among friends. It was like scary in the shower. I would pull out so much hair. And then once I started Nutrafol, it was like four strands. If you're among them, just like Natalie, know that you're not alone. Thinning is normal, and Neutrophil helps women address it within with science-backed supplements. Have you ever wished you had visibly thicker hair? Well, Natalie has, amongst many, <laughs> apparently. How about less shedding? Also, check, Natalie. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> stress is causing your... Did I, did, was it stress for me? Of course not. Okay, thank God. Uh, there are multiple root causes for hair thinning, and Neutrophil addresses key root causes through the whole body approach to hair health. If you are tired of dealing with thinning hair, Neutrophil is here to help. Their hair growth supplements use drug-free ingredients to target root causes of thinning hair and promote healthy hair growth. Listen, it's not just me. It's millions of Americans experience thinning hair. It's not only common, it's normal. But among women, it's not openly talked about. And going through it can feel lonely and frustrating. Join the thousands of women that are doing something about it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code the Vile Files. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare providers recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code the Vile Files. That's Nutrafol.com promo code the Vile Files. One skin, take care of your skin. Don't age just like me. What makes one skin the best? Well, their products are powered by the groundbreaking peptide OS1, which is the first ingredient scientifically proven to prevent the accumulation of age sentient cells, the primary culprit behind skin aging. The real magic? OS1 has actually been proven in the lab to actually reduce the biological age of skin by several years, meaning it not only prevents, but slows down skin aging, leaving you with healthier, more hydrated and glowing skin. The holidays are here, which is perfect timing for today's sponsor, OneSkin. Whether you're traveling or hosting this year, OneSkin is your best defense against the havoc holiday stress can wreck on your skin. 
if you, if you have an age gap in your relationship, get one scared. <laughs> to feel more on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> We know what Nick's getting into stocking again. OneSkin is the world's first longevity company. OneSkin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting root causes of aging so skin feels and appears younger. It's the time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. New customers get 15% off with code V-I-A-L-L at OneSkin.co. That's 15% off at OneSkin.co with code V-I-A-L-L. The new year is approaching. Now is the best time to invest in your skin. Age healthy with one skin. Vessi! Vessi, the world's greatest sneaker because it keeps you dry and comfortable wherever you're walking around. All you city warriors walking to and from your apartment to work and those potholes that look like concrete and you stepped in them and then your feet were soaking wet or maybe you got caught in the rain and then your feet are just damp the whole day. No one likes that. Whether hiking Walking the city, it doesn't matter. Vessi is keeping your feet dry wherever you go. And I probably half people listening to our podcast are, are doing it while walking and braving the city conditions. And you got to be doing it with Vessi to keep those feet dry. They have a great selection of wonderful sneakers, sneaker styles that fit every person's preferences. You know, your, your basic whites to your little bit more, I don't know, fun. Funky? Funky? Fun. Fun and funky. It doesn't matter. Vessi has, I mean, I'm seeing Vessi ads everywhere. They're like taking over the sneaker game. And don't miss out right now. You can keep your feet dry and comfortable too. So if you got a trip coming up, well, you'll be doing a lot of walking or maybe you're moving to a city. Well, well, you had to give up the car. It doesn't matter where you're heading to the beach, a hike. Anywhere you go, you got to get yourself a pair of Vessi. Head to Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L and get yourself a pair today. That's Vessi, V-E-S-S-I dot com slash V-I-A-L-L and get 15% off your first order. That's Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off with code V-I-A-L-L. Justin, what is this about uh, Erica Jane in her interview? She shed some lights on her lack of empathy comment. Yeah, yeah. So I know, Paige, you said you were caught up on Beverly Hills yeah. Housewives. Yeah. So there was this one, this is a past episode where she was like sitting down with her therapist and this is kind of Erica Jane's redemption arc. And then she asked a question where she's like, how do you have empathy? She got a lot of crap for that. Because people are like, what do you mean? How do you have empathy? Yeah. Right. She just came out and she was like, the editors gave me a bad cut. Mm. The original question was, how do you have empathy for someone who's done you so wrong? Got it. Very different. Very, Very yeah. different. Yeah. That is that is pretty dirty if they if that's what they I'm sure that happens did. all the time. Yeah, I'm sure. I said like for all the complaint all, all the conversations in reality the reality TV space and specifically Bravo with like, you know, Bethany and her mm. silly reckoning or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> I, I find that the criticism towards producers is always wildly overblown. Ah. Like, you're all adults. Mm. And sure, producers might be suggestive, suggestive. You know, maybe you could argue manipulative as well. Mm -hmm. But you're fucking an adult. Right. You're a fucking adult. You're not <laughs> fucking an adult. Maybe you're also fucking <laughs> an adult. I don't know. But you're an adult. You know, yeah. and with a vested interest in having and, and, and everyone who goes on reality TV wants to be the center of attention. They want to be a star. And so all a producer really is doing is playing on that, like mm. knowing that all these people want to have their moment, you know, but the edit, the in post, mm. the things that they can do to change context take out words, add in words, add music. Make it fit the story. They can completely change the entire narrative and everything you said. So gripes around the edit are often valid. Gripes around like the producer made me do this and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I always roll my eyes. Yeah. Because it's just you a lack it. of accountability for right. like not liking the outcome. Because had it gone differently or been edited differently or the fans reacted differently, because everyone does something thinking, this is going to pay off for mm. me. And when it doesn't, they always blame the person who suggested that it would go a different way rather than saying, yeah, I was in on it too. Is this like in regards to all the victims of Tom and everything like that? Because there were scenes where she has said before, like, I don't care about anyone else. They're like, how do you not feel bad for the victims? And she's like, I care about myself. Like, I don't yeah. care about them. Well, we were saying this last night. Uh, I don't know if it was for that very thing. 
That was in like the most recent episode, though. Yeah, yeah there was they a did flash- a flashback. There was a, a flashback, flashback yeah. to that. And I will say, and I, I like Erica. Yeah. But when Erica is expressing empathy, mm-hmm. it doesn't land. It doesn't land. Like but, when she when was she, crying yeah. at the thing and saying sorry, and she's like, I'm, she's bawling cry, but she's just, her face is, there's no emotion. It, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't land. But when she's like, fuck everyone else, I'm in it for me, I believe her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're right. You I, I agree with that. I find that she, yeah, I think she's probably just trying to kind of come back around and be like, oh, no, I, I do. I was just saying that because I was in such a dark place. But you're, you make a good point. She does. She she does. does. You she, really miss the uh, mark to go see her in Vegas. She's got her residency in she Vegas. Does. She does. Like, 20 like, dates between September and the new year. <laughs> That's what you picked up on last night. That's the only thing he heard. She I, well, I was it. pretty impressed. That's a, I mean, say what you want. A Vegas residency is a. That's an accomplishment. Yeah. In the entertainment Definitely. biz. Yeah. I've never heard any of her songs or seen her perform, so I, I'm not sure. People love her. Obviously, she has she's a she's, done, she's better than Money Money Can't Buy You Class, right? The Countess Luann. I know, but like that's another Real Housewife <laughs> who does music. Erica Jean's like a proper musician. No, right? she's like a, yeah, she's a performer. She's a performer. She's yeah, a perform- sure. Yeah. Gotcha. The Countess, who we might have on, I think, soon. Lucky. Oh, wow. I have, I have a pass with her. You do? <gasps> yeah. They have a child together. Oh, mm. my gosh. Wow. Don't have a child. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> You you have a real pass. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah. How did that come about? And who else is on that list? Or yeah. is she the only one? What do you mean? A pa- are, are, are we what, what kind of what are pass? We talking, are we talking about hall pass? Like no. Oh, okay. That's what. <laughs> That's what I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Countess Luann is your hall really? pass. Really? After my okay. first tour on okay. reality television, mm-hmm. um, I was in uh, at a, a restaurant called RPM Italian in Chicago. I know it well. The uh, Rancix. Yeah. And um, so I was new to the whole scene, didn't really know a lot of people. And uh, Luann was there at a table with some friends, and they came over to me and said, Luann wants to meet you. And I was like, I don't know who Luann is. They're like, she's on New- Real Housewives of New York. Like, I've heard of it. Sounds fun. Yeah. Went over, said hi. Her friends were very lovely. Luann was very lovely as well. And they were like, you and your friends should join us to our next stop. And I was like, cool. We stopped by. And then Luann became friendlier and friendlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, well, we're going to go, but you you and Luann should go out. And I was like, I think I'm just going to meet up with some friends, you know? And then yeah. she, and Luann was like, where are you going, sweetie, after this? And I was I was about to go to this club, this bar called Stout. Are you from? It's a college very 20 something it's called stout they serve mm-hmm. you know, and it's always packed you know okay. and i was like luann i really don't think you want to go to this place <laughs> like this is not it was like she might love it your scene um and then she asked me if i wanted to go back to her hotel mm-hmm. um where was she staying marriott probably Courtyard. something very very lovely she Peninsula. was very classy and <laughs> i was like i'm gonna go meet with some uh, with some of my friends uh but it was really lovely meeting you and that was that was that. So, what so do you they mean could by have a kiss? <laughs> like, no, we don't have a pass. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, a past. A past. You passed. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. We, I, yeah. I thought you were saying, like, yeah, I have a pass with her. She's my hall pass. pass. And I was like, wow. Got it, got it, got it. I got to say, though, she's looking great. She, she does. does. I started I, that was 10 years. ultimate trip, girls' yeah. trip uh-huh. last night uh-huh. before bed. And Nick was very much snoring beside me. And she looks so good. Honestly, she I does look really good. Like, they all look really good. She looks yeah. the same she, looks she did 10 years ago. Trying to look <laughs> Yeah. I, I haven't started that. I should start. Twist I, my arm. I mean, like, I, need another. I haven't seen anything too crazy first episode. And I was telling Nick, my our friend Sierra was telling me that she started watching it and she didn't have much of, like, an, oh, my God, you have hmm. to. And so I was like, maybe it's, like, a little boring. Yeah. I feel like with these new shows new what like they need Spin-offs. to come out with a bang their first yeah. episode needs to be fucking crazy yeah, yeah or yeah. i'm not really interested i just i can't get i don't like a lot of the um the housewife the shows intermingling the i cross i kind of just like them to stay you don't like a crossover i don't yeah. love a crossover not an Avengers, i agree girly. honestly i i hmm. just yeah i think that now with the bravo cons and all that everyone's getting friendly and mm-hmm. they all cross over into each other's shows and it's confusing for me yeah i don't i don't really like it either i yeah. like the history yeah that they have with each other already yeah. being the driving force for drama i do have to say though that i was surprised that they 
when they recast New York to do the new season of New York, Mm -hmm. I was like, New York is still entertaining to me. I still liked (laughs) the old New York. Like, I wasn't totally turned off to the, like, I was like, this is not the one that I would probably recast. But do you like the recast? I do. I did like this season. I, I did. You didn't like it? No, I wasn't the biggest fan. Yeah. I just thought it was kind of boring. But. Yeah, I, I could see that. I did like... I At I, first, at least. Cause I, I, did you finish it? We watched like the first few episodes. Josh it, actually liked it. I like it. It just it felt like early on, and maybe it got better. It just felt like they weren't that familiar with each other at first. And so a lot of the scenes seemed to be an attempt at drama rather than yeah. actual drama. Yeah. Because they, they, they were... They don't know each they other. They don't really know each other that well. That's so true. It was like... You know, compared to like Beverly Hills Housewives, you have sisters going at it and there's like always like a history there. It seems, seems like some personal shit. Yeah. They're fighting about. So that's it's, where it was lost. On it's me like a little the bit. cheese board or something lasted four episodes. Yeah. It's it's hard when you have like a new season because I think it does start off usually that way where people are not or when they bring in a new housewife, you could tell the new housewife mm-hmm. on Beverly Hills. I'm like, does anyone actually know her? Know. Even Kyle, who's supposed to be your friend, doesn't really seem to know how to introduce her. So yeah. I'm like, they can't be close. They just have like one. I don't know. It's it feels weird. The one Salt Lake City, though, <gasps> came out with a bang and just had me hooked from day one. Salt Who's Lake your City. favorite? That's a hard. I mean, you know, my love for Miriam caused me <laughs> deep. I know that she's like, I went to dinner with people the other night and they were like, she's my top five least favorite. I was how? like, I they just were like, she's so problematic. She's so this and that. And yes, I'm like, she course. is so entertaining. Yeah. It was the one person I heard she was going to Kathy Hilton's. I'm like, Josh, we have to go to this party. We have to. And we were there. And I heard you say, Paige, she's right there. She's right there. It's Miriam Cosby. <laughs> and she walked by us and we took a picture with her. We did take a picture. Do we with have her. that picture? Uh, yeah, I have. A, I have the picture. I'll and that's we... when she looked at my belly and she goes, you're having a boy. And it goes close. <laughs> <laughs> she One chromosome off. <laughs> I, was, I was just hoping. I was like, this interaction won't be bad. You're either going to get Mary Cosby going crazy like saying some really wild stuff and you're gonna be like that was amazing she was so mean to me (laughs) and i loved every second of it she could not have been nicer (laughs) she was an angel it's true i love everything she says on the show is hilarious her telling whitney you called me a prostitute or prostitution (laughs) a prostitution (laughs) and whitney's like what are you talking about yeah and she's like heather what did you call me? A prostitution? Now there goes a predator. A predator. A prostitution <laughs> is the funniest. Thinking it's a prostitution, and then her telling Heather that she looks inbred or something. Oh, yeah, like, her insults are so they cut deep. insane. They cut deep, <laughs> truly. And I just, I just think she is so entertaining. I love her. I also, she was telling us about how they didn't ask her on the other trip, <gasps> and she was feeling a little sad about that. I'm like, Mary. That's you, right. She did it. She didn't go she to, didn't go uh, to the, Bermuda. No, Bermuda. she said she didn't get invited. And she was telling us about that <gasps> mm-hmm. there. And we were like, that sucks. You're our favorite character. Really? And she was like, thank you. But they don't like me because I sit in the van and eat McDonald's. And Which I was like, saw. and that's why we, we love that. you. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't want to participate in anything. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing. It's so funny. I and know. like the fact that she lives in the house with her son and they're like, is your son engaged? She's like, I don't know. I haven't gotten around asking him and, and they're like he's like, he lives in your house fully married yeah and she's like mm, maybe <laughs> this <laughs> when, is so good when they gave the when heather came over and they gave the tour of her house and it's like dr seuss oh, whoville it. chairs yeah i see this. and like the her house is so insane it is oh. and it's so merry is she recently redid it or she is or maybe that was that was a couple seasons ago she redid it i don't know she was kind of a hoarder Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. That one room is really scary. Yeah. No. I love her. Crazy. Now I love her too. I mean, she may be a cult leader. That's they kind of just brushed over that, and then they were like, "We're never gonna, we're never gonna talk about that again." That's why she left the show, right? Because she was in season one and two, and then she left for season three because they were accusing her of leading a cult. And she came back, and I don't think it was ever addressed. I think it was just like we're not gonna. Did it start with an Instagram DM? An Instagram DM? <laughs> yeah. No. You're Mary, not caught up. You're Mary, not, not caught up. Mar- well, you know about the SEC filing. I do. Oh, yeah. Yes. And Meredith like being like, I got a DM. Meredith. She doesn't Meredith is did you guys, the worst. Did you guys meet Meredith at the party? She was, was there. Was she there? She was there. <gasps> she brought the caviar. No. Yeah. <gasps> there was <laughs> caviar? Yep. <laughs> and Meredith brought it. <gasps> I did not I didn't. That. I didn't how do you, see her. How did you know that? Because the reason why we got invited was girls from high school 
texted me and they were like, the twins, the twins. They were like, we're putting, well, one of them. She's like, well, my company's putting on this party for Kathy Hilton. Do you guys want to come? And I'm in charge of the guest list. And was like, I've a hundred percent absolutely didn't run it by Josh. I was your plus one. You were my plus one. <laughs> yeah. And I remember feeling like, are we going to be are like overdressed? I don't know what this is. And we were pulling up. We saw James Kennedy walking up in a fuchsia silk blazer. And, I was like, and Josh was like, I think we're good on the dress code. <laughs> yeah, I wore um, a sweater. Yeah, I, it was. It was wonderfully festive, though. She the... brought snow. There was snow. Real so snow. we did. Dr. Good thing Terry Dubrow wore... had a three piece suit on. Okay, you want to talk about class? Truly. Oh, Josh also loves botched. I do love botched. <gasps> I love botched. botched boy. And so he loves Terry. He, and he's Dr. Nass. And Dr. Nass, if you're right. But yeah, it was, it was so entertaining. The whole. And yeah, Meredith was at the party. I didn't get to meet her. Can't Who else that. was there? I would, have, I would have liked to have seen Meredith. Did in you? I, this was before Kim. I really got into Salt Lake. But so Kyle, didn't she kind of like walk out when we were at yes. the entrance? Yeah. Did you meet Kyle? Okay. Did meet Kyle. Then we saw Kyle the next day at the Variety. Yeah, you went again. Most powerful women in reality TV. Didn't you say? Oh yeah, and you went up to talk to Candy. And I asked Candy to be on my show. And Kyle she was, was sitting Kyle. right next to her. I was her. like, "Well, Kyle, my people are talking to your people, but love to have you too." But Candy gave me her number. Oh, mm-hmm. Solid, and then yeah. Heather came up to Nick and was like, "I have a lot to say. A lot to say. I need uh, to come we'll on the be, podcast. We'll be, we'll be having Heather on. Okay, wow. let me know. I can sit. Can I sit right there and just <laughs> right watch Simi. everything? Yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah, I would love to be here yeah. for that. Well, since we've been talking about Salt Lake City, we've heard from half the cast. Half the cast. Yeah. What, Lisa? <gasps> Whitney. 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 Have you had Heather. any of them? I have not yet. Okay. Have a, okay. Because the way I just. Uh, honestly, when we saw you at the party, Justin's been trying. To, Justin, when I hired him, immediately was like, immediately was like Salt Lake City Housewives. Best yeah. franchise. Yeah. I agree. Get on it. I'm, I'm um, with you. Once that was planted in our head, we started hearing that more and more often. I think you are also another person. I was like, hmm, the Salt Lake City. Hmm, yeah, I was chasing down Miriam Cosby. Then we saw chasing. Mary. And then they, when we've been watching it, and yeah, Meredith is scary. With the accent that. The fake, There's a lot, the fake accent is so bizarre. It is really wild how it just like comes in and out. and she, No one ever addresses it. Well, this most recent episode, she she is spreading more rumors, allegedly. Rumors? How does she say it? Rumors. I don't, I don't <laughs> even know how to say it. And so, yeah, she allegedly, from a fake account, sent a bunch of accusations via DM from like a dummy account. And then, and then was it Her Monica? and Monica were together. Well, shopping on main street in salt lake city and the the mafia the greek mafia gets brought up oh gosh they're like angie you know angie how k. meredith has it out for angie k yeah so she was like well angie k is in the greek mafia monica's like really and so they start talking about it and they get home okay they leave each other monica's like i got a call from meredith and she's like i got a dm about angie k being in the greek mafia you check your and she was like, really? And she was like, you should check yours. And she was like, I probably don't have it. And she was like, no, you should check your DMs. <laughs> and so she checks her DMs. And lo, lo and behold, behold, there's all the messages. And then they continue to message Monica with like court filings and like um, how they filed for bankruptcy. Just and information is flowing. Stuff, like just, going straight. Just through the DMs. To Monica. This. Yeah. And um, this random account is like, Monica, you need to know this information. Mm-hmm. It's probably her son. No, it's, it's like Meredith. Secret... Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> Meredith for sure. But it's, it's her son. It's coming from. What's his name? He's Brooks. getting so, his. Bro- and then Lisa wow. like, confronts yeah. Meredith yes. and then they show Meredith being like, and they're very specific with the accusation is you're spreading rumors. You're sending these DMs. This yeah. is what you're doing. And then Meredith is like, they're mad at me for like nothing. <laughs> Yeah, she's and so I, out of touch with which like, is so funny, what's but, happening. Like, you know that that's an admission of guilt because she's not saying they're accusing me of things I didn't do. She's no, like, she's saying the thing no they're accusing deal. of me is no big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really have to catch up because that is my favorite. I haven't watched in a few weeks. And I, I my you sister was telling me last night, she's like, you need to catch up because now everyone's turning on Monica. I mean, I think everyone's kind of been turned off to her. Well, yeah. Monica always, every once in a while, will remind you that she had an affair with her brother-in-law. And every time she <laughs> says it, she laughs. Josh is like, what is happening? <laughs> He's like, just listening. She like but giggles. doesn't it make you want to watch Salt yeah, Lake City? Definitely. Or are I'm you in. not like, this is I'm crazy? In. The drama in Salt Lake City is unlike any, you can't get it in any other 
like the way that they did um Whitney and Justin did Meredith and Seth's podcast. Yeah. And Seth asked, like, where's the craziest place they've had sex? And Whitney says, when I was under your desk hiding from HR. And I'm like, the craziest place you've had sex is when y'all were both cheating on your spouses. <laughs> he was your boss. You were, were doing hiding it under from his HR. desk. The head of HR comes into the office and you're like hiding under the table. I mean, I guess that's the craziest it, place. Yeah. Like, way to bring up like <laughs> a bunch the of whole, trauma. The whole thing, the whole, the whole, just the Mormon element, the Jen Shaw, like everyone's storyline is crazy. Everyone has a crazy storyline. It's the net, each one's Have better you than Potomac. The, no. Do you like Potomac, Justin? Potomac is like the bad girls club of like <gasps> housewives. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's so that. I love yeah. bad girls club as a preteen. As a pre, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which I definitely should know. not have been watching. But. <laughs> how does anyone, how come there's no fandom at all left for like the real world? Like, cause they keep making them, right? No, Do I they? don't think the real world. I think they stopped I it. Yeah, I don't but think there's a It went on for a while. There's a challenge. Yeah. And yeah. do people, but there, it feels like there's zero fandom. It's kind of like their to, bachelor I, nation. I think of, it's like well, they all do the, the different challenge oh, shows now from the real world. I think it still world. exists, but I've just never been into it. And... Yeah. It does exist. Seems Emily boring. watches it. My friend watches Shout it. Does she like it? Loves it. I, I think, think really. I think they still have a, a cult like following. Yeah. yeah for sure. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Also the teen moms and all that they still have on there. What is yes. this, Justin, about a doctor who appeared on Bravo's hit reality TV show was a- arrested for stealing cast identities? Yeah, so this is still like an investigation. Um, but they just had the first hearing for the court case this past week. So there's a couple that appeared on two trips within like the below deck universe one on mediterranean one on the actual this season this is for you josh <laughs> um one of them's a doctor uh dr francis martinis he's a urologist in fort saligona and his wife jessica were accused of allegedly using the personal information of other cast members to write bogus prescriptions for oxycodone hmm. happens and then it says a subsequent investigation revealed that the doctor had sent dozens of prescriptions for oxycodone to suffolk county pharmacies over a two-year period Law enforcement officials said many of these prescriptions were allegedly fake, written under the names of two below deck cast members. Mm. So the prescriptions were allegedly for members that were like on the crew. So you could have a doctor writing prescriptions under your name and you don't even know about it. So meanwhile, like there are information out there that you're like maybe allegedly taking this pain medicine that you're not. not Sadly, it just sounds like the doctor is an addict. Yeah, and was trying to get oh, really? his fix. However, yeah, an addict or a drug dealer, or a dealer. Yeah. But um, it's funny because I've known doctors who got sober in like the '60s and '70s, where there was no oversight, and you could literally write prescriptions to yourself, and that sounds fun. That is nuts. They also talked about how people would come from drug reps with samples, like cartons of samples, and just be like, "This is a new thing we're working on called Vicodin," <gasps> and they would just have thousands in the office and thankfully because these things have ruined lives there's far more but there's always going to be the random doctor from below deck who's trying to go around the system that's crazy do you guys have any parenting policy on on your kids on oxycodone (laughs) yeah too um because now i have you know we're about to have a baby like we're we share a lot about our lives Mm. on the internet do you guys have parenting policies about how you like show or not show your kids and things like that because like we were talking about last week andy cohen apparently has also decided not to no longer show his kids, his faces. kids faces benjamin i think also they get to a certain age where they start to have a personality and they become they start to look more like themselves like how they're gonna look so if you do there is like a fine line where you start to realize that if they could be recognizable that you it does freak you out a little bit that like people will be walking down the street someone will say hey josh can i take a picture with you or whatever and they'll be like hi max oh my god he's getting so old oh and it'll just be like so bizarre such a weird yeah Yeah. it's a little weird and then that point i just like grab him and like run away as fast as i can yeah it's a hard it's a fine line i mean i have uh, sometimes i'll share things that we have now with like close friends it's nice because you can still like share pictures of your kids but i share very limited every once in a while i'll throw up a photo here and there but i try not to like reveal too much about yeah 
and did that what they're doing did that kind of like when they were born did you have a different stance on that and then just like once they started to look more like who they're gonna look like you stopped um i think josh is like a little more obviously way more public than i am with just he was on youtube at the time people were very invested in the fact that we were having a kid which is weird to me because i was so not in the public eye as he is and so when we had him we kind of you know we're doing yeah like he's a baby or like no one can really Whatever, tell you yeah. but then yeah people just know their names they kind of feel like they know you from you posting online they feel like they're entitled to mm-hmm. say hi to you and you know which it's like such a weird thing because if you're sharing your kids online and you're like yeah this is them and then if someone says hi you're like i guess i put that information out yeah. there so yeah. that's not weird yeah, we try not to we try not to share too much of them anymore. It's it, it I don't know. Yeah, it's I, like hard. You I never know what to do. I feel like once she's born, you know, when she's just a little bean. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I f- you know, we'll babies look some like babies. beautiful baby yeah. pictures. And I'm sure we'll share that and not do the whole like emoji over their face. Because like yeah. you said, like, they're, it's they're like what's the just point? A little bean. But as she gets older and turns into a little human with her own qualities and and distinguishing features and attributes yeah i think i'll be we'll be a little bit more cautious and productive and yeah. we were very critical of a mom last week you know bunny what's bunny whatever oh yeah with the matt rife stuff mm-hmm. yeah. yeah she got mad at us oh for, she did yeah, well, i mean good I mean, for you guys it's like <laughs> well, some people it's so obvious that she like did, it, she she's like stop spreading lies or i'm like what am i lying about it's my opinion yeah like you're using your kid he he's like, six oh. years old so he's like, six years old he didn't he First of all, he's not watching the Matt Rife special. He doesn't have an right. opinion on Matt Rife. He probably doesn't know. And it's just like, I just, the way some of these influencing parents will use their kids. Right. And you could tell, like. Well, she definitely told him what to say. Of because course. why else would a six-year-old be like, you're not nice to women? Yeah. It's like, yeah. how would you know? And like, then, why would you know that? I see it, it, it's not even just her. You'll see it with other parents, too. And these kids are, like, throwing these, like, lines and these one-liners or these little. And, like. Shit, you know, Nellie and I sometimes will make stuff for fun. It's easy. Sometimes we will have to record something Mm. out of, you know, work. Yeah. And like, you don't just nail it in one take, so to speak. And so we'll take a lot of, we'll do stuff. Let's try it again. Let's do this again. And then you imagine these parents who are clearly doing that with their kids. Yeah. And unless their kids are all these one hit wonders who can just drop these like deliver a line no problem you know that like these parents are like feeding their kids line and giving them notes telling them to do it again maybe even getting frustrated at their kids for and it sounds so fucking gross and icky josh you came into the acting world at a young age yeah if your boys no no not a chance i um not even if they say it's my dream i think it, it, it here's what i would say it's the same pages father played in the nfl so we've and we've always been around a lot of like close family friends who are professional football players and so whenever people ask about max playing football i always say not unless he's great because the risk is too high in my opinion like if you love it's one thing to love it and that's fair enough but again if you love it but you're not great it's just not worth the risk Mm -hmm. in my in my feeling so similarly with acting like i also Having started as young as I did, Maya Bialik has this good quote about why she doesn't want her kids to be actors. And it's because kids need to be allowed to have a bad day. And you can't have a bad day on a set, especially when you're the actor. Like there's no calling out sick. I mean, it does happen, but it's like then a massive insurance day has to happen. Yeah. And it's huge. It's not just like cover my shift. Mm. And that pressure that would go so on. much pressure it's crazy and it just can't i was in a very unique situation i had a single mom only child like we were going through a lot of you know just normal challenges i was like this chubby kid gave me a lot of confidence and my mom was like i'm going to support it because he really he feels great when he does it but max and shy have very like what what i hope is more of a typical you know, classic support system and roots. And, and I also just, uh, uh, this might be a little inside baseball, but if you start acting when you're 13, 
you'll always have the moniker of child actor, right? Which is like, schmucky and annoying, right? Because in times, there's surely plenty of child actors who prove the stereotype right. But then there are people who, and even myself included, who feel like, oh, I've continued to work and continue to have success. And and obviously there's the Scarlett Johansons who have crushed it and become movie stars. But, you know, I, I hope to not always have that moniker. And what I would say to my kid is like, if you just wait till 17, You'll never have you'll never have to fight that stigma because yeah. something about 17, 18, you start then you're not a child actor. You're just an actor. Interesting. I just think that like we've we have talked about it. And for me, I'm like, if my kid's like, but mom, I really love it. I'll be like, great. I'll let's sign you up for the local theater. Yeah, yeah. Class play. I'll take you to theater. the class. play. Yeah. If you love it. Great. Do it. But like if you want, you can study it in college and, and go and like really yeah. do all that, but like have a normal life and be a kid and, yeah. you know, go to school and do all the things. And then, you know, eventually if you're old enough and you're like, no, I still love it and I want to keep doing it, then great. But I'm, I'm, I just wouldn't put him into either of them into like acting as a kid. It's just like different, it's a different life. And did you watch Drake and Josh? Um, I, my younger sister was a really big fan of Drake and Josh. <laughs> she is a true, true fan. And so I, I had seen it for sure, but I wasn't like, um, I think I was maybe a little older. Did than you watch it? The, yeah, of course. Then the, um, Duh. The kids that watched it. <laughs> so I didn't even know we were at a party when we first met. And I remember my friend was like, it was a party in the Valley that all of us from high school would go to every year. And like people would show up, all these celebrities mm -hmm. and stuff. So my friend, we were there, we we're eating pizza, everyone's drinking. And so it's like, oh my gosh, Drake's here. And everyone was like imagining the rapper. And so I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's, that's like a big that's get crazy. for this party. Wow, this yeah. is growing. <laughs> and so we <laughs> were walking out and I was seeing Josh. I was like, I see a cute guy too. So at the same time, my friend and I both go, he's there. And I was like, no, I'm talking like I'm pointing that guy. She's like, no, so am I. And I'm like, what are you talking That's about? Drink. That's not Drake. Yeah. Like I'm like, we were all like dying, laughing, trying to piece Post together. Yeah. And then everyone's like, no, it's from Drake and Josh. And I was like, OK, that makes more sense. But I just we were like laughing because I was looking for Drake at the party. That's how you met him. Yeah, that's how we met. Yeah. Wow. Who made the first yeah. move? Uh, her friend. Her, yeah, my friend. Not really. Her friend, Ani, who I have to give all the credit to kind of like connected us because I think she maybe, as you said, thought maybe I was not ugly. And oh. she came up and started talking <laughs> to me. She started the conversation. Said, you should meet my friend. Yeah. And then when did you get the uh, hint that she was into you? I just, I was in the, I was at, at a place where like I was 24 and I just like, I was pretty upfront. I was like, you know, what? like I had done so much of that, like, let's chat for months mm -hmm. and like, and then maybe possibly on a first date six months from now, like maybe I could, we could hug. And like, <laughs> yeah. I was just more of like the, do you want to go on a date? Let's see. And if not, like, I don't want to waste your time. Like if you're not into it. And uh, so I think I was pretty much like, yeah, why don't you give me your number yeah. and we can go on a date? <gasps> yeah. Which I appreciate it. Cause also I, I just was young and surrounded by like young people who didn't want to ever go on a date or like do think it was just like he just was like do you want to go on a date and I'm like yeah sure oh hot chocolate gosh. hot that chocolate and twilight <gasps> that's so iconic super yeah super in love so super in love. love yeah how did you propose I uh okay well it's it's a fun story whereas um so I decide I want to Propose to Paige. So I start calling around and I don't know if you had this experience, but you start asking your friends, like, you have a diamond guy? And everyone's like, bro, don't worry <laughs> about it. I got the guy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go to downtown and right. shady boardrooms and whatnot. So uh, I have a big brother and I, I called him and like from the Big Brother Foundation, like since I was eight. Right. So this guy's been in my life for almost 30 years mm -hmm. and he's he's the best. Dan. And he's got a thick Boston accent. I was like, Dan, I want to get engaged. Like, do you have a diamond guy? And he goes, Josh, man, do me a favor and call your mother. Oh. He's like, because once you propose, her mother's going to take over. But your mother will love you forever if you include her in this process. So I go, That's good okay. advice. <laughs> I call my mom and I go, Ma, I want to propose to Paige. Obviously, we'd been together like five years already, so she loves Paige. And and she goes, um, 
what are you thinking for the dimensions? <laughs> <laughs> I go, uh, the size diamond and the shape, blah, blah, blah. She goes, you'll have a rendering in an hour. <gasps> so she yeah, calls her truly. diamond guy in Jersey. Stop. An email hits. It looks great. He makes it. And then it, it sat in uh, my safe for like three or four months because I couldn't figure out what Wait, to do. Right time. Um, so I, it sounds cooler than than I am, but I was working Paris Fashion Week. Um, As one does. Okay. Very fancy. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and, uh, you know, influencing. <laughs> and uh, I, Paige was coming with me. And I just had a feeling her wonderful aunt, AJ, would always kind of like elbow me kind of at family functions like, Oh, what are you? What are we waiting for? Yeah, be like, thank you, AJ. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, if we go to Paris, like, I don't know. I just feel like she might be expecting it. She says she wasn't, but so I'm like, I can't wait to do it in Paris because I'm an idiot. I'm gonna lose the ring. It's gonna be terrible. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it right before we go, and then we'll have this incredible trip. But I'm like, I gotta ask her dad first for permission. So I show up at her house the day before, and. At this time, some of her siblings are still living at home. It's like one of those busy, true family homes. Someone's mm -hmm. always home. And literally, I pull up, and I'm so nervous, and her dad walks out of the garage, and he goes, Josh, do you know where everyone is? The house is completely empty. And I go, thank you, God. <laughs> like, here we go. And I go, uh, hey, Ken, because um, it's such a manly name, Ken. You Very know? manly. So yeah. man. And I go, uh, I, I, I want to ask you something. And he's like, yeah. No, he doesn't oh, talk like that. <laughs> I said, um, I wanted to ask your permission to marry Paige. And he goes, oh, oh, well, I think if, if you love her and she loves you, then yeah, I think that's great. And I was like, bet. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> that's he's, like, mid. he's like, get out. Yeah, like, Never mind. Yeah. I tried to, and then after I was like, and how are you? And he's like, I can't do small yeah. talk right now. <laughs> Just but leave. The next day, I uh, before we, I I proposed in bed before we went on our trip. Stop. Didn't, and you weren't expecting it? No. And I was like, thank God you did it like this. Like he woke, I would be so nervous. I just don't like eyes on me. I don't, the whole thing, when people do public engagements, I'm like, good for you. Yeah. It could not be me. Yep. And yeah, he just, and I was like, oh, thank God. And then we went to Paris for a few days and we didn't have to like do the whole thing where people are like oh my god let's do a party and all the right. things it's just like we got to go away and hang out it was fun oh my god yeah so romantic and you guys we did the opposite we did all the things you hate oh well, uh, flash well, mob no. uh no, no. Flash mob. definitely it was, wasn't like in front of no. the castle at Disney <laughs> oh my gosh it was um <laughs> fun yeah <laughs> she wanted a party with to celebrate with friends that mm. was that was the only request that I had. It was whenever you do this, wherever you do it, she would like it documented for memories mm -hmm. and she would like to celebrate it with friends and family afterwards. Yeah. So I kind of had to plan a surprise party, so to speak. And, uh, and then I had to figure out, well, she wants, I, mean, I know she's going to want to get done up and get glammed and look nice because mm. she's going to want this recorded. And how do I do all that? And, um, so I t had my PR team uh, plan a fake event. Oh. And it was a private screening for a man called Otto, Tom Hanks's new movie sure. at the time that came out. And Tom was going to be there and we were going to meet Tom, <laughs> which I had to think of who would be a celebrity that anyone would be excited to meet. But mm. when she realizes she won't meet, she like will be won't fine. Care. That's she a won't good, that's care smart. that much. Hanks, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, had, it was like there, I mean, we made a flyer and we used... Uh, Canva. 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 <laughs> we used Canva to make like a little flyer. Cute. Cute. Shout out Canva. And then there Use was code a, Bile Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, there was a, and she walked in a room with lit candles and like I... I actually recorded a message because I figured I'd just cry through most of my most speech. Of and so, and then I walked out and proposed and then we went to a party. Yeah. Wow. Was, was really it just cute. the two of you in the room when you proposed? There or, were two or friends. Two friends. But it was, yeah. there were two levels. So it was only Nick and I. Right. Above. And on that level. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then upstairs. They were part of the, uh, I, I like, and I hired like extras to like, act like they were also going to the also event. going to the event wow. Like yeah. that. wow so we're like waiting in line and it's like one person at a time can go in 
to this immersive experience with Tom Hanks and a man called Otto. It's just you and Tom. <laughs> yeah. And so there's like other people coming in who are like checking in and saying their names and like talking about how excited they are to like meet Tom and go to this event. Stop. And then Nick is like, I guess at some point he realized I had my purse with me and he was like, she's going to have to put that down. Like, what can we do? So the girl out front who's checking names is like, also, there's like no bags allowed. So I'm going to have to take your purse. And the girl behind me is like, no, this Gucci's my baby. I'm like, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's like easy with the improv. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah this is, come on. Take, take it easy. <laughs> Reel it in a little bit. <laughs> You're selling too much. Literally. literally. Uh, but it all worked out. There's a video of it on our Instagram. And I'm going to go watch it. The, only the thing, full version's on TikTok. The only thing better would have been if after you proposed, everyone's happy, you walk into the party and you had Hanks there. Right. Like, yes. that's <laughs> right. Fun. We, I heard through my team that word, word got back to Tom that I was doing this for whatever that was worth. Cute. So he yeah. was aware, but didn't care enough to be involved. <laughs> he was like, oh, cool. That Hanks. Yeah. yeah. Good guy, yeah if Hanks. it was like Beyonce, I probably would be like, or not me. Where, where is she? Yeah. So, <laughs> no, just kidding. It was perfect. Uh, well, it was great. Yeah. Do we, we should do it again. Do we have to let him go? Probably. No. Any final thoughts? No, mm -hmm. thanks Love for having guys. me. Please. It's my first podcast. Yeah, Paige, well, it's so great. You had nothing to so do great. <laughs> it was your first. It was my first. Podcast. It was your first. Uh, anytime, please come on the good guys. Please have Love us. Love to have yeah. you guys. Anytime you have anyone from Salt Lake City. Let me know if you need an assistant. I can help you type out some I, questions. I think come January, uh, there might be some Salt Lake City ladies Can't on wait. the Lyle Files. Yeah. Ah! Can't wait. So, truly. truly, if you'd like to come. I, I would. I would love I would love to. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Meeting Mary M. Cosby, I still talk about it. Daily. No. And I haven't shut up. And I haven't shut up about it. <laughs> yeah. And then, yes, pl promote all your great work that you're, you're doing. <laughs> uh, the Good Guys, avail my podcast with celebrity Ben Soffer. Soon to have you guys on the show. It's available everywhere you listen to podcasts. And your I Instagrams? have nothing to promote. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want at Paige O'Brien to end? Yes. Yes. Paige O'Brien to end. And uh, now that the strike's over, mm. will we be getting to see you in any, any stuff coming up? Or what after the Oppenheim big break? The Oppenheimer, yes. It was all right. I get, no. The, uh, did you, the story you told me at the party, is that something you've told before? Can you? I don't want to get you in trouble or anything. Which which story? Well, just how, like, on set where you didn't want to, like, ruffle any feathers out of fear of lines getting cut. and. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I, I haven't exactly told that story. But, yeah, I basically, it, the whole thing was a dream sort of process. But when you're working at that high of a level with, Christopher Nolan and Robert Downey Jr., Killian Murphy, these incredible actors. You want to be very careful with doing anything that's going to, you don't, you don't even want to do anything that'll get too much attention. Mm. Right? You just want to like go in and do your job. And, uh, but yeah, there were, there were certainly moments where sometimes a line would get added and you'd get thrown a line and you're like, oh my God, like, this is, this is good. This is, this is another one. <laughs> and so it was, uh, it was a pinch me experience for sure. Um, and I did this cute movie with Diane Keaton and Kathy Bates. It'll come out next year. That's iconic. Yeah, yeah. truly. They were unreal. I was excited about that one. Diane's like my queen. Yeah. yeah. Diane yeah. Keaton, and Kathy oh Bates. Gosh. That's awesome. That's awesome. It was fun. Eugene Levy. It's <gasps> a really fun cast. Stop. When is Nicole this Richie? <laughs> it's good. It's called, yeah, it's uh, called Summer Camp. I don't know. I think probably like summer, fall. What character yeah. you play? It's about these three women who go back to summer camp to sort of rekindle their friendship <gasps> that they had sort of lost over the years and they had met at summer camp. And I play sort of the hapless summer camp counselor. Who's oh, love. Yes. <laughs> the the stir should. of hijinks. Stop. It's really cute. It's a really uh, sweet movie. I think people will like it. Can't wait for that. Thanks. That's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, I can't Thanks, thank you guys, guys enough for coming. Thank so you. So much fun. Thanks Please come back. Thanks for doing it, Paige. Yeah, Paige, you thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> well, really, it was more like ask Paige to come on because of all of her wonderful Bravo hot takes. And we will reluctantly agree to also let also her bring Josh. Josh. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fine, so you're welcome. Bring yeah. your face. Paige actually thank is you. like your agent and got exactly. you on the vowel. Yeah. I'll, I'll just be the Uber driver next time. <laughs> Josh's career is really taking like a different turn that he wasn't expecting because of my obsession with Bravo. <laughs> yeah. He's going to Kathy Hilton's. He's going to yes. talk to yeah. It's uh, It I was a real it. uh, happy moment for me when I got to talk to Josh about 
you know, reality TV and, and <laughs> being at Kathy Hilton's house. So thank oh, you, Paige, beautiful. for indoctrinating Josh. And, and, and it was great having you both. Lo- love the couple vibes. Truly. Just a little double date. Can we go on yeah, a double date? Fine. Would love to. <gasps> Anytime. I'm sure you have so many places in the Valley that you love. We Plenty. don't know any. So that would be amazing if you could. Yeah. <gasps> Cute. We found a new burger spot. Have you been to um... Easy Street? That's I feel mm. like that's like so. You have known. It? Mm-hmm. You like a good smash burger? Who doesn't? Easy Street, better yeah. I think than Burgers Never Say Die. Burgers, burgers she, she wrote. wrote. Burgers she wrote. Have mm. you been to Burgers she wrote? I haven't. Also really good. Also, really I feel good. like you hate smash burgers. I, I don't yeah, seek, do I don't like seek burgers? out burgers, but <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll eat oh, okay. them when okay. when uh, we gotcha. seek out burgers. You guys have like the best sushi over here. <gasps> well, we do. Yeah. 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 She is not a huge sushi place. I love a California roll. Mm. You know Cute. who has shockingly good <laughs> we sushi? We love Alabama. Cute. Honor Bar. <laughs> of Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah, yeah. What? Honor Shock- Bar. He said Honor Bar. That's like. Yeah, that's because it's a hillstone. It's our favorite sushi probably ever. Is it's that the best sushi hillstone. outside yeah. of Japan. It honestly is like, I, <laughs> she was Japan. like, one day she's like, you should try the sushi here. And I did. And I was like, oh my God, this is Game incredible. Changer. It's a life changing moment. Yeah. The Hillstone sushi. Group, shout out Houston, Gulfstream, True. Bandera. Yeah. We love no, them it's really good. Oh You're so well versed. Uh, all right. Well, we'll be back on Thursday for another episode of Going Deeper. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at thevalfiles.com for all things texting, office hours, mediation, ask Nick, you know the drill. And uh, I think that's it. Don't forget, next week, this holiday season, we're dropping two episodes. Just an ask Nick, not just an ask Nick, an amazing ask Nick episode and then we have an update special on friday no reality recap no going deeper enjoy your family this holiday season don't forget we dropped an amazing episode of ask nick uh yes to yesterday uh with the incredible lewis house uh really great just just uh, you know he gives amazing advice as well really enjoyed uh my time with lewis on ask nick so be sure to check that episode out as well other than that we'll see you back on thursday bye Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.